In the quiet corners of our minds, where thoughts whisper and consciousness stirs, lies the potential for extraordinary transformation. This isn't the loud, boisterous change that announces itself with fanfare. It's the deep, seismic shift that starts within and radiates outward, reshaping lives, destinies, and ultimately our very essence. The journey to self-mastery, a quest as ancient as philosophy itself, beckons not just the brave but the curious, those willing to delve into the recesses of their being to unearth the gems of wisdom laid by the Stoics, to embrace solitude's profound teachings, and to confront the shadows as illuminated by Carl Jung. This journey is the embodiment of becoming extraordinary. Imagine, if you will, a world where the Stoic teachings of Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, and Epictetus serve as more than historical curiosities. Picture these ancient philosophies as living, breathing guides for navigating the tumultuous seas of modern life. The Stoics didn't just ponder on abstract virtues, they crafted a roadmap to resilience, equanimity, and joy amidst the inevitable challenges of existence. Their wisdom, distilled through the ages, offers us not just solace but a call to action, to rise above our circumstances, to cultivate inner strength and to forge a life not of fleeting happiness but of lasting fulfillment. But what of solitude? In our hyperconnected world, the very notion seems anachronistic, a relic of a bygone era. Yet to learn to enjoy being alone is to unlock a superpower hidden within. It's in the silence of solitude that we hear the most profound truths whispered. Without the cacophony of external voices, we can finally listen to the murmurs of our own souls, discover our deepest desires, and kindle the flames of self-discovery. Solitude isn't a sentence to loneliness, but an invitation to introspection, a space where we can breathe, reflect, and grow. Then comes the daring venture into the labyrinth of our own psyche, guided by the illuminating torch of Carl Jung. Facing our dark side isn't an act of self-indulgence, but a courageous step towards wholeness. Jungian psychology doesn't just offer us theories, it offers us a mirror, reflecting not just the person we present to the world, but the myriad selves that dance in the shadows of our consciousness. By confronting these hidden parts, acknowledging them and integrating them, we embark on the path to becoming our true selves, whole, unfragmented, and authentically us. The path to self-mastery isn't merely a title, it's a promise. A vow to venture deep into the essence of what it means to live a life of purpose and meaning. This journey is not for the faint of heart. It demands bravery, honesty, and a willingness to face ourselves fully. Yet the rewards are immeasurable. To master oneself is to master the very art of living, to navigate life's tumults with grace, and to find peace and joy in the simplicity of being. As we move on this path together, we'll explore not just theories, but the practical application of these age-old philosophies. We'll discover how the wisdom of the past is not just relevant but essential in our quest for self-improvement and personal development. This journey is about transformation, about shedding the layers of who we think we should be to uncover the brilliance of who we truly are. Let us begin this odyssey of the self armed with the knowledge that the quest for self-mastery is the most noble and profound journey we can undertake. It's a path littered with challenges, yes, but also with insights, growth, and ultimately transformation. He who fears death will never do anything worth of a man who is alive. Seneca In the grand theatre of life, where uncertainties and challenges constantly surround us, the pursuit of an extraordinary existence often seems like a daunting, almost Herculean task. Yet, amidst the chaos and the noise, there lies a philosophy, time-tested and resilient, offering us a blueprint to not just endure, but thrive. This philosophy is Stoicism, 
an ancient Greek school of thought that has been the bedrock of resilience, wisdom, and inner peace for countless individuals through history. Today we embark on a journey, not just any journey, but one that delves deep into the heart of what it means to live an extraordinary life, guided by the profound lessons of some of the most famous Stoic philosophers. Stoicism, a philosophy that dates back to the early 3rd century BC, is more than just a set of beliefs or ethical claims. It's a way of life. It teaches the development of self-control and fortitude as a means of overcoming destructive emotions. The philosophy asserts that virtue, such as wisdom, is happiness, and judgment should be based on behavior rather than words. That we don't control and cannot rely on external events, only ourselves and our responses. But why does this ancient philosophy matter in our modern world? In an age where the pursuit of external success often leaves us feeling empty and unfulfilled, Stoicism brings us back to the core of what truly matters, our character, our actions, and our perception of the world. It's about finding tranquility in a world we cannot control, focusing on self-improvement instead of material wealth, and developing resilience in the face of adversity. In essence, this philosophy equips us with the tools to lead a meaningful and extraordinary life. We will explore seven pivotal lessons from some of the most renowned Stoic philosophers. Each section will unveil a key principle of this philosophy, accompanied by practical advice on how we can apply these lessons to our daily lives. Our journey will take us through the teachings of Zeno of Citium, who laid the foundation of Stoicism to the powerful insights of Marcus Aurelius, whose meditations provide a timeless guide to living with grace and purpose. We will learn from Seneca about the power of resilience and from Epictetus about the art of distinguishing between what we can control and what we cannot. Musonius Rufus will teach us about the role of discipline and Chrysippus will offer a deeper understanding of the nature of our emotions. Each philosopher brings a unique perspective, yet their teachings converge on a common path, the path to becoming extraordinary. This is not about becoming extraordinary in the eyes of the world, but extraordinary in our capacity to face life's challenges, to remain steadfast in our values, and to cultivate inner peace and strength. As we delve into these lessons, we will uncover the timeless relevance of Stoic philosophy. You will see how these ancient principles have been echoed in modern psychology, self-help movements, and even in the business world. We will explore how the stoic practice of mindfulness and emotional regulation can enhance our mental health and overall well-being. And perhaps most importantly, we will discover how the pursuit of virtue, as advocated by the stoics, can lead to a life of fulfillment and meaning. This journey is not just about learning, it's about transformation. It's about taking the wisdom of the past and using it to create a better, more extraordinary future for ourselves. As we explore each lesson, I encourage you to reflect on how these teachings resonate with your own life experiences. Think about the challenges you face, the values you hold dear, and the kind of life you wish to lead. Remember, the path to becoming extraordinary is not a destination, it's a process. It's a continuous journey of self-discovery, self-improvement, and self-mastery. And it starts with understanding and applying the profound lessons of Stoicism. So let us embark on this journey together. Let us explore, learn, and grow. Let us find inspiration in the wisdom of the Stoics and use it to forge our path to an extraordinary life. As we embark on this philosophical odyssey, our first stop is with Zeno of Sidium, the founder of Stoicism. Born in Cyprus in the 3rd century BC, Zeno's journey to Stoicism began with a shipwreck that left him stranded in Athens. It was there, amidst the ruins of his material possessions, that he discovered the true wealth of philosophy. 
His teachings, which later crystallized into Stoicism, were not born out of academic pondering but out of real-life challenges and the quest for a meaningful life. Zeno's philosophy was encapsulated in his famous quote, Well-being is realized by small steps, but is truly no small thing. This profound statement is a testament to the Stoic belief in gradual, consistent progress towards a virtuous life. He didn't advocate for overnight transformation or grandiose displays of wisdom. Instead, he championed the idea of small daily acts of virtue that accumulate over time, leading to significant personal growth and well-being. At the heart of his teachings were foundational principles that would shape Stoicism. The first of these is living in agreement with nature. For him, this meant recognizing and aligning oneself with the natural order of the world and understanding our place within it. It was about accepting the flow of life and finding our unique role in the larger tapestry of existence. This alignment with nature is not just about environmental awareness, but about understanding the natural state of human beings, rational social creatures capable of virtue. Virtue, indeed, was the cornerstone of his philosophy. He posited that virtue is the highest good and that all other things like wealth, health and even life itself are indifferent. This doesn't mean that these things are unimportant, but rather that they are not good in themselves. They only become good when used virtuously. In his view, a life of virtue is a life in harmony with reason, and it is this harmony that leads to true happiness. So how can we apply Zeno's teachings in our modern lives? The first step is embracing simplicity. In a world where consumerism and materialism often overwhelm us, returning to simplicity can be a radical act of stoic practice. This doesn't necessarily mean living a Spartan life, but rather focusing on what truly matters, our values, relationships and personal growth, and letting go of unnecessary excesses. Aligning our actions with our core values is another practical application of his teachings. This involves a deep introspection to understand what we truly value and then ensuring that our daily actions reflect these values. It's about being authentic and living a life that is congruent with our beliefs and principles. This alignment brings a sense of peace and integrity, as there is no conflict between what we do and what we believe in. Lastly, practicing mindfulness is a key aspect of living in agreement with nature and virtue. Mindfulness in the Stoic sense is about being fully present in the moment, aware of ourselves and our environment, and acting with intention and reason. It's about being conscious of our thoughts, emotions and actions, and how they align with the natural order and our pursuit of virtue. Mindfulness allows us to respond to life's challenges with clarity and equanimity rather than reacting impulsively or emotionally. Zeno of Citium's teachings offer us a powerful framework for living an extraordinary life. By embracing simplicity, aligning our actions with our core values and practicing mindfulness, we can embark on the path of small, consistent steps towards well-being and virtue. As we integrate these practices into our daily lives, we gradually transform ourselves, not just into individuals who endure life's vicissitudes, but into those who thrive in the face of them, grounded in wisdom and inner peace. Lesson 2. Embracing Impermanence As we continue our journey through the wisdom of Stoicism, we encounter Marcus Aurelius, a figure who embodies the Stoic ideal like few others. Aurelius, known as the Philosopher King, was not only a Roman Emperor but also a devout Stoic philosopher. His reign was marked by wisdom and virtue in the face of relentless challenges including war, plague and political turmoil. His personal writings, collected in meditations, 
provide a window into the soul of a man who sought tranquility in tumultuous times. Marcus Aurelius once wrote, You could leave life right now, let that determine what you do, and say, and think. This stark reminder of life's impermanence is a central theme in his philosophy. It's a call to live with urgency, not in fear of death, but with the realization that every moment is precious and finite. He saw life as a fleeting opportunity to practice virtue and contribute positively to the world. His views on impermanence and accepting change are particularly relevant in our modern era, where change is constant and often overwhelming. Marcus Aurelius teaches us that change is not just an inevitable part of life, but an essential one. It is through change that we experience growth, learn new things, and have the opportunity to test and apply our virtues. He encourages us to embrace change, not resist it, and to see it as a natural process that is integral to the fabric of the universe. One practical way to embrace this philosophy is by keeping a journal, a practice he himself diligently followed. Journaling allows us to reflect on our daily experiences, our reactions to change, and our progress in living according to Stoic principles. It's a tool for self-reflection and self-improvement, providing a space to process thoughts and emotions, set intentions, and track our growth over time. Through journaling, we can gain clarity, find inner peace, and strengthen our Stoic practice. Reflecting on change as a natural process is another practical tip we can learn from Aurelius. This involves shifting our perspective on change from seeing it as a disruption or a source of fear to viewing it as a natural inevitable part of life. By understanding that everything is in a constant state of flux, we can reduce our resistance to change and increase our adaptability and resilience. This perspective helps us to cope with life's uncertainties and to find stability within ourselves, regardless of external circumstances. Focusing on the present is perhaps the most crucial lesson we can take from Marcus Aurelius. In a world where we are often distracted by the past and anxious about the future, he reminds us that the present moment is all we truly have. He urges us to give our full attention and effort to the here and now, to act virtuously and make the most of the current moment. By being fully present, we can engage more deeply with life, appreciate the small joys and wonders around us, and respond to challenges with clarity and composure. His teachings on embracing impermanence and accepting change are not just philosophical concepts, they are practical tools for living a more fulfilled and meaningful life. By keeping a journal, Reflecting on change as a natural process and focusing on the present, we can cultivate a mindset that is resilient, adaptable, and deeply engaged with the world. In doing so, we honor the legacy of Aurelius and take a significant step towards becoming extraordinary in our own right. Lesson 3. The Power of Resilience In the tapestry of Stoic philosophy, Seneca stands out as a figure of immense wisdom and practicality. Lucius Seneca, a Stoic philosopher, statesman and playwright, served as an advisor to Emperor Nero. Despite his tumultuous life, which eventually led to his forced suicide, his writings remain a beacon of insight on how to live a virtuous and resilient life. Seneca once said, Difficulties strengthen the mind, as labor does the body. This powerful statement encapsulates his approach to hardship and resilience. He viewed life's challenges not as misfortunes, but as opportunities for growth and strengthening of character. He believed that just as physical exercise strengthens the body, mental and emotional challenges fortify the mind and spirit. Exploring his teachings on resilience, 
we find the philosophy deeply relevant to our contemporary struggles. In a world where adversity and stress are often constant companions, understanding how to transform hardship into a source of strength is invaluable. He teaches us that our reaction to adversity is what truly defines the experience. It's not the event itself, but our response to it, that matters. One practical application of Seneca's teachings is the art of reframing challenges as opportunities. This involves a shift in perspective, where instead of viewing difficult situations as obstacles, we see them as chances to practice virtue, to learn, and to grow. For instance, a professional setback can be seen as an opportunity to reassess our career path, to develop new skills, or to strengthen our resilience. By reframing challenges in this way, we not only cope with difficulties more effectively, but also extract value and wisdom from them. Practicing gratitude is another powerful tool Seneca offers. In the midst of hardship, it can be easy to overlook the positive aspects of our lives. However, by consciously acknowledging and appreciating what we have, be it good health, supportive relationships, or even small daily pleasures, we can cultivate a sense of contentment and resilience. Gratitude shifts our focus from what we lack to what we possess, fostering a mindset of abundance and resilience. It's about finding light even in dark times, a principle that was central to his philosophy. Developing mental fortitude is perhaps the most crucial aspect of his teachings on resilience. This involves building a strong and stable mind that can withstand life's vicissitudes. Mental fortitude, according to Seneca, is cultivated through self-discipline, reflection, and an unwavering commitment to stoic principles. It's about training the mind to remain calm and rational in the face of adversity, to maintain perspective, and to stay anchored in our values and virtues. This mental fortitude is not innate, it is developed through consistent practice and the conscious application of Stoic wisdom. His life and teachings provide a roadmap for building resilience in the face of hardship. By reframing challenges as opportunities, practicing gratitude, and developing mental fortitude, we can not only endure life's trials, but emerge from them stronger and wiser. These practices empower us to face adversity with courage and equanimity, turning what could be our greatest setbacks into our most profound sources of growth and self-discovery. In embracing Seneca's lessons, we find the tools to build a life not free from challenges, but one in which challenges become the catalyst for personal development and transformation. This approach to resilience is not about denying or avoiding hardship, but about engaging with it constructively and courageously. It's about recognizing that in the crucible of difficulty, the most extraordinary aspects of our character are forged. As we integrate this profound wisdom into our lives, we realize that resilience is not a destination, but a journey. It's a continuous process of adapting, learning, and growing, no matter what life throws our way. By adopting a stoic approach to resilience, we equip ourselves with the strength and flexibility to navigate life's complexities with grace and fortitude, turning every obstacle into a stepping stone on the path to an extraordinary life. Lesson 4. Control and Choice Our exploration of Stoic wisdom brings us to Epictetus, a figure whose life story embodies the very essence of Stoic resilience and strength. Born into slavery in the Roman Empire, Epictetus endured a life of hardship and limitation. However, his spirit remained unbroken, and he later gained his freedom, becoming an influential Stoic teacher. His teachings, compiled in the Discourses and the Enchiridion, offer profound insights into the nature of human existence and the path to tranquility. He is perhaps best known for his clear distinction between what we can control and what we cannot. He famously said, some things are in our control and others not. This simple yet profound principle lies at the heart of Stoic philosophy. According to him, 
things like our property, reputation, and even our bodies are ultimately outside our complete control and are therefore indifferent. What truly matters, and what we do have control over, are our inner choices, judgments, and reactions. This distinction is crucial in our modern lives, where we often expend tremendous energy and stress over external events. Epictetus teaches us to redirect our focus and energy towards what we can actually influence, our internal world. By understanding and internalizing this distinction, we can find peace and resilience in the face of life's uncertainties and challenges. One practical application of Epictetus' teachings is focusing on personal reactions and choices. This involves taking responsibility for our responses to external events, rather than blaming circumstances or other people. For example, if we face a professional setback, instead of succumbing to frustration or despair, we can choose to respond with determination and creativity. This shift in focus empowers us as we realize that our inner world is the domain of our true power. Practicing mindfulness is another key aspect of his philosophy. Mindfulness in this context means being fully aware of our thoughts, emotions, and reactions in the present moment. It's about observing our internal landscape without judgment and choosing our responses with intention. By practicing mindfulness, we can catch ourselves when we start to worry about things outside our control and gently guide our focus back to what we can influence. This practice not only enhances our emotional well-being, but also strengthens our ability to live according to Stoic principles. Letting go of external outcomes is perhaps one of the most challenging yet liberating teachings of Epictetus. In a world where we are often judged by external achievements, detaching from outcomes can seem counterintuitive. However, he reminds us that true freedom and tranquility come from within, not from external conditions. By letting go of our attachment to specific outcomes, we open ourselves to a life of flexibility, adaptability, and inner peace. We learn to put forth our best effort without being overly attached to the results, trusting that whatever happens, we have the inner resources to handle it. His teachings on control and choice offer a powerful framework for navigating life with wisdom and equanimity. By focusing on our personal reactions and choices, practicing mindfulness and letting go of external outcomes, we cultivate a strong inner core that remains stable and serene, regardless of external circumstances. This approach does not mean passivity or indifference. Rather, it is an active engagement with life from a place of inner strength and autonomy. In embracing the lessons of Epictetus, we learn to distinguish between the ebb and flow of external events and the steady current of our inner choices and attitudes. This distinction is the key to unlocking a life of true freedom and tranquility, where our happiness and peace are not contingent on the whims of fate, but are firmly rooted in the realm of our control. As we integrate these practices into our daily lives, we become masters of ourselves, capable of facing life's vicissitudes with grace, courage, and a deep sense of empowerment. Lesson 5. The Role of Discipline As we delve deeper into the Stoic tradition, we encounter Musonius Rufus, a figure often overshadowed by his more famous Stoic contemporaries, yet equally influential in his teachings. Rufus, a Roman philosopher, is known as the Roman Socrates for his emphasis on ethical living and the practical application of philosophy. His teachings, though less documented than those of Seneca or Epictetus, offer profound insights into the Stoic way of life. Musonius Rufus once stated, It is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. 
This statement reflects the Stoic emphasis on critical thinking and self-examination. His teachings focus heavily on the role of discipline as a key component of Stoic living. For Rufus, discipline was not merely a personal virtue, but the foundation upon which a virtuous life is built. He believed that without discipline, it is impossible to live according to the principles of Stoicism and achieve true happiness. His emphasis on discipline is particularly relevant in our modern context, where distractions are constant and instant gratification is often the norm. In a world that frequently values short-term pleasures over long-term well-being, Rufus's teachings remind us of the importance of self-control and the pursuit of enduring values. One practical way to incorporate his teachings into our lives is by establishing daily routines. Routines provide structure and order, creating a framework within which we can practice Stoic virtues. A daily routine might include time for reflection, exercise, study, and engaging in meaningful work. By adhering to a routine, we cultivate discipline, ensuring that our actions are aligned with our values and goals. This consistency is crucial for personal development and helps us to remain focused and resilient in the face of life's challenges. Practicing self-control is another key aspect of Rufus's teachings. In the Stoic view, self-control is not about denying oneself all pleasures, but about choosing pleasures that are in alignment with our values and that contribute to our well-being. It involves managing our impulses and desires, making conscious choices rather than being led by fleeting emotions or external influences. Practicing self-control helps us to resist temptations that may lead us away from our chosen path and to remain steadfast in our pursuit of a virtuous life. Prioritizing essential over non-essential pleasures is also a crucial lesson from Rufus. In a society where consumerism and materialism are rampant, distinguishing between what is truly necessary and beneficial for our well-being and what is superfluous is vital. Rufus encourages us to focus on pleasures that enrich our lives and contribute to our growth, such as the joy of learning, the satisfaction of hard work, and the contentment that comes from healthy relationships. By prioritizing these essential pleasures, we cultivate a life of meaning and purpose, free from the empty pursuit of external validations and material possessions. Musonius Rufus's teachings on discipline offer a powerful antidote to the distractions and excesses of modern life. By establishing daily routines, practicing self-control, and prioritizing essential pleasures, we can cultivate a disciplined life that is in harmony with Stoic principles. This disciplined approach to living enables us to focus on what truly matters, to develop our character, and to achieve a sense of tranquility and fulfillment. In embracing the lessons of Musonius Rufus, we recognize that discipline is not a restriction, but a liberation. It frees us from the tyranny of uncontrolled desires and impulses, allowing us to live with intention and purpose. Through discipline, we gain the freedom to pursue a life of virtue, to realize our potential, and to contribute meaningfully to the world around us. As we integrate these practices into our daily lives, we embody the Stoic ideal of living in accordance with nature and reason, paving the way for a life that is not only successful in the conventional sense, but deeply rewarding and enriching. Lesson 6. Understanding the Nature of Emotions In our exploration of Stoic wisdom, we now turn to Chrysippus, a philosopher whose contributions were pivotal in shaping the Stoic school of thought. Chrysippus, who succeeded Cleanthes as the head of the Stoic school, was a prolific writer and thinker, deeply influential in developing the intellectual underpinnings of Stoicism. 
His work significantly elaborated on the nature of emotions and their role in human life. His philosophy is encapsulated in his powerful assertion, No one is free who is not master of himself. This statement underscores the Stoic belief in the importance of self-mastery, particularly over our emotions. He did not advocate for the suppression of emotions. Rather, he emphasized understanding them and managing them in a way that aligns with reason and virtue. His teachings on emotions are incredibly relevant in today's world, where emotional reactions often dictate personal and collective decisions. In a culture that sometimes glorifies unbridled emotional expression, he offers a different perspective. Emotions are not to be feared or unleashed without restraint, but understood, managed, and aligned with our rational nature. One practical application of Chrysippus' teachings is the development of emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence involves being aware of and understanding our emotions as well as the emotions of others. It means recognizing the triggers of emotional responses and understanding their impact on our thoughts and actions. By developing emotional intelligence, we can navigate our emotional landscape with greater clarity and make decisions that are not solely based on fleeting feelings, but are grounded in rational thought and aligned with our values. Responding rather than reacting is a key lesson from Chrysippus. In the heat of the moment, it's easy to react impulsively to situations driven by our immediate emotions. However, he teaches us the value of pausing, reflecting, and choosing our response. This doesn't mean being emotionless or indifferent. Rather, it's about acknowledging our emotions and then choosing a response that is in line with our rational judgment and virtues. By responding rather than reacting, we exercise control over our inner world and act in a way that is consistent with our principles and goals. Chrysippus' teachings on the nature of emotions offer a powerful framework for emotional resilience and self-mastery. By developing emotional intelligence, practicing reflective meditation, and choosing to respond rather than react, we can navigate life's challenges with greater equanimity and wisdom. These practices enable us to manage our emotions effectively, ensuring that they serve us rather than control us. In embracing the wisdom of this great Stoic, we learn that true freedom comes from within. It is the freedom to choose our response to the world around us, the freedom to align our emotions with reason, and the freedom to live in accordance with our deepest values. As we integrate these lessons into our lives, we become masters of ourselves, capable of facing life's vicissitudes with a balanced mind and a steady heart. This mastery over our emotions is not just a path to personal tranquility and well-being, it is a cornerstone of living an extraordinary life, guided by the timeless wisdom of Stoic philosophy. As we draw our exploration of Stoic wisdom to a close, let us reflect on the profound lessons imparted by these great philosophers. From Marcus Aurelius, we learned the art of embracing impermanence, understanding that life's fleeting nature should inspire us to live with purpose and urgency. His teachings remind us to cherish each moment, to focus on what truly matters, and to accept the natural flow of life with grace. Seneca, with his powerful insights on resilience, taught us to view difficulties not as obstacles, but as opportunities for growth and strengthening of character. His wisdom encourages us to reframe our challenges, practice gratitude, and develop a fortitude that remains unshaken by life's storms. Epictetus, with his clear distinction between what we can control and what we cannot, offers a blueprint for inner peace and empowerment. He guides us to focus on our reactions and choices, to practice mindfulness, and to let go of our attachment to external outcomes. As we embark on the path to becoming extraordinary, it is important to remember that the journey is one of small steps. 
incorporating Stoic practices into our daily routines does not require monumental changes. Rather, it is about making consistent incremental adjustments to our mindset and actions. It's about choosing each day to respond to life's challenges with wisdom, to align our actions with our values, and to cultivate inner strength and tranquility. The journey to becoming extraordinary through Stoic wisdom is not a linear path. It is a continuous process of learning, growing, and evolving. It is about embracing life in all its complexity, finding joy and meaning in the midst of challenges, and developing a character that is resilient, virtuous, and deeply grounded. This journey is not just about personal transformation. It is about contributing to the world in a meaningful way, living a life that is not only successful, but also enriching and fulfilling. As we close this chapter, let us carry with us the timeless wisdom of the Stoics. Let their teachings be a guiding light in our quest for an extraordinary life. Remember, the path to greatness is paved with virtue, resilience, and a deep understanding of the self and the world. It is a path open to all who choose to walk it, a path that leads not just to success, but to a profound sense of fulfillment and purpose. So as you step forward from this moment, carry with you the lessons of Marcus Aurelius, Seneca and Epictetus. Let them inspire you to live each day with intention, to face life's challenges with courage and to continually strive towards becoming the best version of yourself. Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. Carl Jung In these insightful words lies the essence of our exploration today. The journey into the darker aspects of our psyche, a realm often avoided yet crucial for personal growth. This exploration is not merely about self-understanding, but a transformative path to profound self-realization and empowerment. Carl Gustav Jung, a pioneer in the world of psychoanalysis, introduced concepts that radically altered our understanding of the human mind. Among his most influential ideas is the concept of the shadow. This term represents the unconscious aspects of our personality, traits, desires and memories that are often ignored or repressed. The significance of confronting these shadowy parts of our being lies in our innate human quest for wholeness and authenticity. The shadow, though frequently perceived negatively, holds a reservoir of energy, creativity, and deep insight into our true selves. By facing it, we set forth on a path of genuine self-improvement and holistic growth. My personal journey with the shadow began at a pivotal moment in my life. Despite external successes, I grappled with an inner void, a disconnect between my achievements and my sense of fulfillment. This dissonance led me to Jung's teachings and subsequently to a path of deep introspection. It was a journey filled with challenges, yet the insights I gained were profoundly transformative. I unearthed aspects of myself that were buried under societal expectations and personal fears. Acknowledging these hidden parts liberated me from self-imposed limits and enabled a more authentic connection with others and a deeper sense of purpose. The core argument we unfold today is this. Embracing our dark side is a transformative journey towards becoming our truest selves. It's about recognizing that our shadows, while they may stem from fear and pain, are also sources of untapped potential, strength and authenticity. This journey is not straightforward. It is complex, filled with challenges and revelations, and most importantly, it is a path laden with opportunities for growth. As we navigate through Jung's psychological landscape, we will explore the nature of this concept, the repercussions of ignoring it, and the transformative power of facing and integrating it into our conscious lives. Integrating our dark side isn't about eliminating these darker aspects or striving for an ideal state of perfection. It's about harmonizing our inner world. This process enriches our personality, expands our emotional spectrum, 
and increases our capacity for empathy and understanding. The rewards of this integration are diverse. They range from enhanced self-awareness to enriched relationships, from unleashed creativity to emotional resilience. Facing and embracing our darker side can lead to a life that is not only more authentic but also more fulfilling and vibrant. Our discussion will guide you through practical steps for this journey. We'll cover self-reflection exercises, therapeutic approaches, and real-life success stories, shedding light on the path to embracing your shadow. Whether you are new to Jung's theories or are already on the path of self-exploration, our discussion promises to offer thought-provoking insights and actionable strategies. In essence, the journey towards embracing our dark side is transformative. It involves acknowledging, accepting, and integrating all parts of ourselves. It is a path not to becoming who we think we should be, but who we truly are, complex, unique, and whole. Join me as we embark on this profound journey of self-discovery and realization, a journey where facing our shadows leads us to find our true light. Carl Gustav Jung, born in Switzerland in 1875, emerged as a pivotal figure in the field of psychology, forging a path distinct from his contemporaries. His upbringing was marked by a fascination with philosophy and spirituality, elements that would later deeply influence his psychological theories. After beginning his career as a psychiatrist, Jung's early work was significantly influenced by Sigmund Freud. However, he soon diverged developing his unique theories that would shape modern psychology. Jung's impact on psychology cannot be overstated. He was a pioneer who ventured beyond the traditional confines of early 20th century thought, integrating aspects of mythology, religion and philosophy into his understanding of the human psyche. His holistic approach was revolutionary shifting the focus from merely treating psychopathologies to exploring the rich and complex nature of the human mind. Jung's journey into the depths of the mind began with his own experiences. As a child, he was introspective and often solitary, qualities that fostered a deep inner life. This inner world was filled with dreams and visions, which he later understood as manifestations of the unconscious. His academic career was marked by a relentless pursuit of knowledge, culminating in his medical degree from the University of Basel in 1900. His work initially aligned with Freudian psychoanalysis, but by 1912, Jung had begun developing his theories, leading to a famous split with Freud. This break was partly due to Jung's disagreement with Freud's emphasis on sexuality as the sole driving force behind human behavior. Jung believed the psyche was more complex and influenced by broader factors, including spiritual and cultural elements. Jung's career was prolific, marked by extensive writing, lecturing, and the establishment of key psychological concepts. He founded Analytical Psychology, a school of thought that continues to influence therapy, counseling, and personal development practices today. One of Jung's most revolutionary ideas was the collective unconscious. He proposed that in addition to our personal unconscious, there's a deeper layer shared among all humans. This collective unconscious is a reservoir of experiences and memories inherited from our ancestors, containing universal themes and symbols. These themes, which he called archetypes, manifest across cultures and time, influencing our beliefs, behaviors, and dreams. Archetypes are innate universal prototypes for ideas and may manifest in dreams, literature, art, or religion. Some of the most notable archetypes identified by Jung include the mother, the hero, the shadow, and the anima and animus. These archetypes represent fundamental human motifs or experiences acting as guides in our psychological development and understanding of the world. Perhaps the most relevant to our discussion today is the archetype of the shadow. It represents the darker, unconscious aspects of the personality that the conscious ego does not identify with. 
It often comprises repressed ideas, weaknesses, desires, instincts, and shortcomings. Jung believed that confronting and integrating our dark side was crucial for achieving psychological wholeness. He asserted that the parts of ourselves we perceive as negative or undesirable are as integral to our identity as the positive aspects. Jung's exploration of these concepts was not just theoretical. He applied them in his clinical practice. He believed that understanding these archetypes and the collective unconscious could lead to profound insights into a patient's psyche and aid in their journey towards self-realization and individuation. Individuation, a central concept in Jung's theory, is the process of integrating the unconscious with the conscious mind, leading to a more complete and balanced individual. This process involves reconciling opposites within the psyche, such as the conscious and unconscious, the masculine and feminine, and the personal and collective aspects of the self. Through his extensive work, Jung laid the groundwork for many modern psychological practices, from dream analysis to art therapy. His influence extends beyond psychology into literature, art, and religious studies, making him one of the most significant figures in understanding the human psyche. Jung's theories offer a lens through which we can view not just individual psychology, but also cultural phenomena and collective behaviors. By exploring these deeper layers of the mind, Jung opened up new possibilities for understanding ourselves and the world around us. His work invites us to consider the myriad influences shaping our thoughts, actions, and experiences. At the heart of Carl Jung's analytical psychology lies the concept of the shadow, a term that encapsulates the hidden and darker aspect of our personality. Jung described it as the dark side of the ego and the repository of repressed desires, undeveloped potential and unfulfilled aspirations. It represents those parts of ourselves we choose to keep in the dark either because they are socially unacceptable, contradict our preferred self-image, or are painful to acknowledge. Jung believed that the shadow is an integral part of the human psyche and is formed during our early developmental stages. As we grow and learn societal norms, we tend to suppress traits and impulses that are deemed inappropriate or unacceptable. These suppressed elements do not vanish but rather accumulate in the unconscious, forming the dark side of our mind. It is not just a repository of negative aspects, it also holds positive potential. Jung famously stated, Everyone carries a shadow and the less it is embodied in the individual's conscious life, the blacker and denser it is. This quote highlights that this darkness, if not acknowledged, can have a profound impact on our lives, often manifesting in ways we don't expect or understand. This concept can manifest in various ways in our daily lives, often showing up as projections. Projection is a defense mechanism where we attribute qualities, feelings, or desires we find unacceptable in ourselves to others. For instance, if someone is often irritated by arrogance in others, it might be a trait they unconsciously deny in themselves. Another common manifestation is through dreams and fantasies. The shadow can appear in dreams as a figure of the same gender as the dreamer, often engaging in actions or displaying traits that are in stark contrast to the dreamer's conscious identity. These dream symbols are valuable clues to understanding the hidden aspects of our psyche. Our dark side also emerges in our immediate emotional reactions, especially those that are disproportionate to the situation. For example, an overreaction to a minor annoyance might be a shadow element expressing itself. Such intense emotional responses are often clues pointing towards unresolved issues or repressed aspects of ourselves. It is also seen in our moral judgments. 
the traits we find most objectionable in others are often reflections of our own shadow. Jung once said, everything that irritates us about others can lead us to an understanding of ourselves. This statement underscores the importance of self-reflection when we encounter negative emotions toward others. The shadow plays a significant role in our interpersonal relationships. It can manifest as immediate and irrational dislikes or aversions towards certain people, often because they exhibit traits that we unconsciously reject in ourselves. Conversely, intense and unexplainable attractions can also be the work of the dark side of our mind, drawing us to people who embody aspects of ourselves that we have not yet acknowledged or integrated. Understanding and acknowledging this idea can have profound implications for personal growth. By recognizing and integrating these hidden aspects, we can achieve a greater sense of wholeness and authenticity. The process of shadow work involves exploring these darker aspects, understanding their origins and finding ways to integrate them into our conscious life. This integration helps in reducing internal conflict and improving our ability to relate to others. It's essential to understand that this dark side, despite its name and nature, is not wholly negative. It harbors not only our fears and weaknesses, but also unexplored talents, creative energies and desires. For example, a person who has always valued rationality and dismissed artistic pursuits might find a wellspring of creativity in their unacknowledged self. Jung's concept invites us to embrace the full spectrum of our personality, including those aspects we might find uncomfortable or challenging. By doing so, we open ourselves to a richer and more nuanced understanding of who we are. This process can lead to a more authentic and fulfilling life as it allows us to live more fully and express ourselves more genuinely. The Consequences of Ignoring the Shadow In the realm of psychological development, the failure to acknowledge and integrate the aspects of our personality that we have relegated to the unconscious can have far-reaching consequences. Neglecting this part of the self can lead to a range of psychological and emotional difficulties, impacting our behavior, relationships and overall well-being. Psychological Impact 1. Projection and Relationship Strain one of the most significant effects of ignoring the unacknowledged self is the tendency to project these attributes onto others. This projection can lead to misunderstandings and conflicts in relationships. When we are unaware of our own negative traits or unresolved issues, we may attribute them to those around us, leading to unwarranted criticism and judgment. This not only strains interpersonal relationships, but also prevents us from understanding and addressing our own issues. 2. Internal Conflict and Inauthenticity The unrecognized aspects of our personality can create an internal conflict, as these repressed parts struggle to surface. This internal discord can manifest as feelings of inauthenticity, where individuals feel they are living a life misaligned with their true selves. This misalignment often leads to a general sense of dissatisfaction and lack of fulfillment even in the face of external success or societal approval. 3. Psychological Imbalance Jungian theory emphasizes the importance of balance within the psyche. The unaddressed parts of our psyche can disrupt this balance, leading to psychological disorders such as anxiety, depression, or even personality disorders. These mental health issues often stem from or are exacerbated by the dissonance between our conscious identity and the unacknowledged aspects of our self. 4. Stunted Personal Growth Ignoring these aspects hinders personal growth and development. When we deny parts of our personality, 
we limit our potential for self-discovery and self-actualization. This limitation can result in a life that feels unfulfilled and devoid of personal meaning. Real Life Implications 1. Career and Personal Ambitions In the professional realm, individuals might find themselves pursuing careers or goals that align with their conscious self-image but ignore their deeper aspirations or talents. For example, a person might excel in a logical, analytical career while suppressing a deep-seated passion for the arts. This suppression can lead to a sense of emptiness and a lack of engagement with their work. 2. Interpersonal Dynamics On a relational level, the consequences can be seen in patterns of conflict and dissatisfaction. An individual might repeatedly find themselves in relationships where they feel misunderstood or unfulfilled not realizing that this is a reflection of their internal struggle with unacknowledged aspects of their personality. 3. Emotional Well-Being Emotionally, the impact is evident in feelings of inexplicable sadness, anger, or fear. These emotions often arise from the tension between the conscious and unconscious selves. For instance, a person might experience unexplained bouts of anger, which could actually be a manifestation of repressed feelings of injustice or personal powerlessness. 4. Physical Health the psychological stress of maintaining this internal division can even manifest physically. Symptoms such as chronic fatigue, unexplained aches and stress-related illnesses are often linked to unresolved psychological issues. The journey towards acknowledging and integrating these hidden parts of ourselves is not just a path of personal healing, but also a step towards healthier relationships and a more balanced society. It is through this process that we can find true alignment with our inner selves, leading to a life that is both authentic and fulfilling. In the upcoming sections, we will explore the transformative process of facing and integrating these aspects of our personality. This exploration will not only provide insight into the mechanisms of personal transformation, but also offer practical guidance for those seeking to embark on this journey of self-discovery and growth. Embracing the darker aspects of our personality is a crucial step in achieving psychological wholeness. This process involves several key steps, each with its own challenges and strategies for overcoming them. 1. Self-reflection and acknowledgement The first step is to engage in honest self-reflection. This involves recognizing that there are aspects of ourselves that we have not fully acknowledged. It's about asking ourselves tough questions and being open to discovering parts of our personality that we have previously denied or ignored. 2. Exploration and Understanding Once we acknowledge these aspects, the next step is to explore them. This can be done through various methods such as journaling, meditation, and psychotherapy. The goal is to understand why these aspects were repressed and how they have influenced our behavior and choices. 3. Acceptance After understanding these facets of our personality, the next crucial step is acceptance. This means accepting them as a part of who we are without judgment. It's about recognizing that these aspects, whether positive or negative, contribute to the complexity of our being. 4. Integration The final step is integrating these aspects into our conscious life. This means finding ways to express and incorporate these previously hidden parts of ourselves in a healthy and constructive manner. It could involve changing behaviors, exploring new interests, or altering how we interact with others. Challenges and Difficulties 1. Resistance to Self-Discovery One of the first challenges is overcoming the initial resistance to self-discovery. 
It can be uncomfortable to confront aspects of ourselves that we have long denied. The key here is to cultivate a non-judgmental attitude towards oneself and to recognize that this process is a path to greater self-awareness and fulfillment. 2. Emotional Turbulence As we delve into these unacknowledged aspects, we may encounter strong emotions such as fear, anger or sadness. These emotions are a natural part of the process. It's important to allow oneself to feel these emotions without becoming overwhelmed by them. Practices such as mindfulness and grounding techniques can be helpful in managing these emotional states. 3. Difficulty in acceptance. Accepting these aspects can be challenging, especially if they conflict with our established self-image or societal norms. It's crucial to create a supportive environment during this process, whether it's through therapy, supportive relationships, or self-help groups. Reminding oneself that all human beings have a complex mix of traits and that perfection is not the goal can also aid in acceptance. 4. Integrating into daily life Finally, integrating these aspects into our daily life can be a gradual process. It may involve changing long-standing patterns of behavior or re-evaluating one's values and goals. Patience and persistence are key, as is the willingness to experiment and learn from mistakes. As we navigate this journey, it's important to remember that this is not a linear process. There will be setbacks and moments of doubt, but each step forward contributes to a deeper understanding of ourselves and a more authentic way of living. This journey is about embracing the full spectrum of our being and recognizing that each aspect, no matter how dark it might seem, has value and contributes to our wholeness. The benefits of integrating your shadow, becoming your best self. The journey of integrating the darker parts of our personality is not merely a process of self-examination and acceptance. It is a transformative path that leads to profound personal growth and a more fulfilling life. Let's explore the multitude of benefits that this integration offers. Integrating these aspects of ourselves leads to a holistic transformation. This process is akin to putting together the missing pieces of a puzzle. By acknowledging and incorporating all parts of our personality, we become more complete and authentic versions of ourselves. This wholeness brings about a multitude of positive changes in various aspects of our lives, including our self-awareness, relationships, creativity, emotional resilience, and overall well-being. Enhanced Self-Awareness One of the primary benefits is a heightened sense of self-awareness. When we explore and accept all parts of ourselves, we gain a deeper understanding of who we are, what drives us, and what we truly value. This awareness enables us to make more conscious choices in our lives, aligning our actions with our true selves. We become more mindful of our reactions, behaviors, and decisions, leading to a more intentional and authentic life. Improved Relationships Integrating these aspects also significantly improves our relationships. By understanding ourselves better, we develop greater empathy and understanding towards others. We become more accepting of others' complexities, as we recognize similar complexities within ourselves. This understanding fosters deeper connections, improved communication, and more meaningful interactions with those around us. Unleashed Creativity Creativity is another area that benefits greatly from this integration. Often, our most creative impulses lie in the parts of ourselves that we have yet to explore fully. By embracing these aspects, we unlock new sources of inspiration and creativity. We find new ways of expressing ourselves, be it through art, writing, music, or any other form of creative expression. 
This creative liberation not only enriches our lives, but also contributes positively to the world around us. Emotional resilience and growth. The journey towards integration also cultivates emotional resilience. By facing and accepting our darker parts, we learn to navigate difficult emotions and situations with greater ease. This resilience allows us to face life's challenges with more strength and grace. Moreover, this process contributes to emotional growth. We develop a broader emotional range, experiencing life more fully and with greater authenticity. I encourage you to embark on this journey of personal exploration and integration. The path is not always easy, and it requires courage and honesty, but the rewards are immeasurable. You will discover aspects of yourself that you never knew existed. You will develop a richer, more nuanced understanding of who you are, and most importantly, you will step into a life that is more aligned with your true self. Remember, this journey is deeply personal and unique to each individual. There is no right or wrong way to approach it, and it unfolds differently for everyone. The key is to stay open, curious, and compassionate towards yourself as you navigate this path. As you embark on this transformative journey, you are not only improving your life, but also contributing to a more conscious and empathetic world. By becoming the best version of ourselves, we inspire those around us to do the same. This collective growth and self-improvement have the power to bring about positive change in our communities and society at large. Transformation and Integration – The Path to Wholeness The process of integrating the unacknowledged parts of our personality is not just a journey of self-discovery, it is the heart of what Carl Jung termed individuation. This journey is about more than just self-improvement. It's about achieving a deep and authentic sense of self-realization. Individuation is a concept introduced by Jung that refers to the process of becoming aware of oneself, integrating the unconscious with the conscious, and fully realizing one's unique potential. It is the psychological process of integrating opposites within the psyche, including the conscious with the unconscious elements of our personality. Jung explained, The goal of life is to make your heartbeat match the beat of the universe, to match your nature with nature. This quote reflects the essence of individuation, aligning one's inner self with the broader rhythms of life. It's a process of reconciling the various parts of oneself, leading to a more harmonious and balanced existence. Individuation is not about becoming perfect or eliminating flaws. It is about embracing all aspects of oneself, leading to a greater understanding and acceptance of who we are. This process fosters a sense of completeness and authenticity, allowing us to live in a way that is true to our deepest selves. Integration plays a crucial role in the process of individuation. It involves acknowledging, understanding, and incorporating the previously unrecognized aspects of our personality into our conscious life. This integration is not a one-time event, but a continuous process of growth and development. As we integrate these aspects, we often find that our values, beliefs, and perceptions evolve. We may discover new interests or passions, or we may find ourselves re-evaluating our life's direction. This evolution is a natural part of becoming more aligned with our authentic selves. A key aspect of this journey is overcoming dichotomies within ourselves. Jung believed that the human psyche is inherently dualistic, comprising opposing elements such as the masculine and feminine, the rational and irrational, or the light and dark. Individuation involves reconciling these opposites, recognizing that they are not mutually exclusive, but complementary parts of a whole. 
This reconciliation leads to a more nuanced understanding of ourselves and the world around us. It allows us to navigate life's complexities with greater wisdom and flexibility. As Jung aptly put it, one does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light but by making the darkness conscious. This statement highlights the importance of acknowledging and integrating all parts of ourselves, even those we might prefer to keep hidden. The ultimate goal of this transformative process is to live authentically. Authentic living means being true to our innermost nature, expressing ourselves honestly and fully in all aspects of our lives. It is about aligning our actions and choices with our true selves, leading to a life that is not only more fulfilling, but also more meaningful. This journey towards authenticity and wholeness is unique for each individual. It is shaped by our personal experiences, values, and aspirations. However, the underlying principles remain the same, embracing the full spectrum of our being and striving for a harmonious integration of all our parts. Philosophical Insights on Shadow Integration Nietzsche and the Embrace of the Whole Self Friedrich Nietzsche, the German philosopher, profoundly impacts our understanding of self-integration. His concept of the Übermensch, or Overman, is particularly relevant. Nietzsche proposed that the Übermensch is an individual who has transcended the constraints of conventional morality to create a personal value system. This transcendence is not about disregarding ethical principles but about understanding and integrating the multitude of forces within the self, including those that society might deem negative or undesirable. Nietzsche's philosophy encourages us to confront and embrace the complexities of our nature. He believed that acknowledging and integrating these complexities is essential for achieving true greatness of character. His famous assertion, He who fights with monsters should be careful lest he thereby become a monster. When you gaze long into the abyss, the abyss also gazes into you strikingly captures the idea of facing the darker aspects of our personality. It's a caution and a call to embrace our entirety without losing ourselves in the process. Soren Kierkegaard and the Pursuit of Authentic Selfhood Soren Kierkegaard, often regarded as the first existentialist philosopher, provides another crucial perspective on self-integration. His emphasis on personal choice, responsibility, and the search for meaning aligns closely with the journey of integrating the unacknowledged self. Kierkegaard believed that true self-discovery involves a deep engagement with the inner self, including aspects that we might be inclined to ignore or hide. He posited that individuals often conform to societal norms at the expense of their authentic selves, leading to a life of inauthenticity. For Kierkegaard, the path to authentic selfhood involves a conscious acknowledgement and acceptance of one's true nature, including the less flattering parts. He encourages a reflective life where one continually questions and reassesses their beliefs, values and choices, aligning them more closely with their genuine self. Eastern Philosophies – Embracing Duality and Balance Eastern philosophies, particularly Taoism and Buddhism, offer profound insights into the process of self-integration. The Taoist concept of yin and yang symbolizes the balance of opposites, darkness and light, softness and strength, passivity and activity. This concept can be applied to the idea of integrating the unacknowledged self, where the goal is to find harmony between the contrasting aspects of our personality. Buddhism with its emphasis on the middle way, teaches a similar concept of balance. It advocates for a path of moderation, avoiding the extremes of self-denial and self-indulgence. 
This philosophy can be interpreted as an encouragement to acknowledge and integrate all aspects of the self, thus avoiding the extremes of rejecting or becoming consumed by any single part of our psyche. These philosophical perspectives offer a multifaceted view of the journey towards self-integration. They provide a framework for understanding the complexity of this process and guide us in embracing the full spectrum of our personality. Each perspective, in its own way, contributes to our understanding of what it means to live as a fully realized, authentic individual. These philosophical perspectives collectively offer a rich understanding of the journey toward self-integration. They not only provide frameworks for comprehending this complex process, but also guide us in embracing our full personality spectrum. As we draw this exploration to a close, it's vital to reflect on the profound journey we've embarked upon, a journey that delves into the depths of our psyche and the essence of our being. We began by introducing Carl Jung, a luminary in the field of psychology, whose groundbreaking ideas have illuminated the path to understanding the human mind. His concept of integrating the unacknowledged aspects of our personality offers a framework for profound personal transformation. We delved into the intricacies of this concept, exploring how these hidden facets of our personality, though often perceived as dark or negative, are essential components of our whole self. We discussed the consequences of neglecting these parts the psychological imbalance, the strain on relationships, and the barrier to personal growth. We then journeyed through the transformative process of facing and integrating these aspects. This path involves self-reflection, understanding, acceptance, and integration, each step presenting its unique challenges but leading to a more authentic and harmonious existence. We explored the multitude of benefits that this integration brings, enhanced self-awareness, improved relationships, unleashed creativity, and emotional resilience. These benefits underscore the transformative power of embracing all parts of our psyche. We turn to the wisdom of philosophers, both ancient and modern, who have pondered the complexities of the human spirit. Their insights provided a broader context for our discussion highlighting the timeless and universal nature of this quest for self-integration and authenticity. This journey is more than a psychological or philosophical exploration. It is a deeply personal one. Each of us carries within us the capacity for incredible growth and transformation. By embarking on this path of self-discovery and integration, we open ourselves to a life that is not only more authentic and fulfilling, but also more in tune with our true potential. This process of integration is ongoing and ever-evolving. It's a journey that requires courage, honesty, and perseverance. It asks us to look within, to confront what we might have previously shunned, and to embrace our complete selves, with all our complexities, contradictions, and inherent beauty. I encourage you, the viewer, to reflect on your own journey. Consider the aspects of yourself that you might have neglected or overlooked. Recognize that within these hidden depths lie untapped strengths and potentials. The journey towards integrating these aspects is not just a path to self-improvement, it's a path to self-revelation and empowerment. Take the time to engage in self-reflection, to explore your inner world with curiosity and compassion. Remember, this is not a journey you have to undertake alone. Seek support, whether through dialogue with others, professional guidance, or exploring the rich resources available in philosophy and psychology. As you embark on this journey, remember that each step you take towards integrating your entire self is a step towards a more authentic and fulfilling life. The path may be challenging, but it is also incredibly rewarding. Embrace the journey with an open heart and mind and be prepared to discover a world within you that is rich, vibrant, and full of potential.
Your visions will become clear only when you can look into your own heart. Who looks outside, dreams. Who looks inside, awakes. These words by Carl Jung remind us that the true journey of discovery lies not in seeking new landscapes but in having new eyes, in looking within ourselves to uncover the richness and diversity of our being. So step forward with courage and curiosity. Embrace the full spectrum of your humanity, and as you do, watch as your life unfolds in ways more magnificent and fulfilling than you could have ever imagined. This is not just the path to self-improvement, it is the path to self-realization, a journey to the very core of what it means to be fully and wonderfully human. The greatest thing in the world is to know how to belong to oneself. These profound words by Michel de Montaigne, a celebrated French philosopher, serve as a gateway to our exploration today. This quote, seemingly simple, harbors a deep ocean of meaning and reflection. It brings us face to face with one of the most misunderstood and undervalued aspects of human existence, the art of enjoying solitude. In today's world, where connectivity is constant and solitude is often equated with loneliness or social isolation, the idea of finding joy in being alone seems almost revolutionary. The societal lens often paints being alone with a gray brush, coloring it as something to be avoided, an indicator of social unpopularity or emotional distress. However, this perspective misses the profound richness that it can offer. Montaigne, who spent a significant portion of his life in quiet reflection and writing, understood the power of solitude. His works, which have stood the test of time, are a testament to the depth of thought and understanding that can be achieved when one turns inward. In his writings, Montaigne advocates for a life of self-reliance and introspection. He suggests that true contentment and understanding come from within, not from the external world of social accolades or material possessions. The idea of belonging to oneself is both empowering and challenging. It requires a person to dive into the depths of their being, to confront their fears, desires, and the very essence of who they are. This journey is not for the faint of heart. It asks for courage, for the strength to face oneself in the mirror of solitude and to accept what is seen. But the rewards of this journey are immeasurable. In the words of Montaigne, this self-belonging opens the door to the greatest thing in the world. But why is this journey so important? In solitude, we find a rare opportunity to disconnect from the external noise that constantly bombards our senses. It's in these moments of quiet that our mind has the space to wander, to explore, and to create without boundaries. The stillness of solitude acts as a canvas for the mind, allowing thoughts and ideas to flow freely, untainted by the expectations and judgments of others. It's a state where creativity is not just a possibility, but a natural occurrence. Moreover, it's a crucible for self-discovery. It's in the silence of being alone that we can truly listen to ourselves. We can hear the whispers of our deepest desires, the subtle hints of our true passions, and the often ignored voice of our intuition. This self-awareness is the cornerstone of a fulfilling life. It informs our choices, guides our actions, and shapes our future. This path also leads to resilience. In spending time alone, we learn to rely on ourselves. We develop the strength to face life's challenges without the need for constant external support. This independence is liberating. It instills a sense of confidence and self-assuredness that is visible to the world. Yet the beauty of being alone is not just in the profound self-discovery and creativity it fosters. It's also in the simple, peaceful moments it offers, the quiet morning walks, the stillness of a night sky, the unadulterated pleasure of a book read by the window. In these moments, solitude is a gentle reminder of the beauty of simplicity, of the joy found in the small, often unnoticed aspects of life. 
In embracing this idea, we also learn to appreciate the value of social connections more deeply. The contrast between our moments alone and the time spent with others becomes more pronounced. We begin to cherish our relationships, not out of a need for constant companionship, but from a place of genuine appreciation and understanding. Enjoying solitude is not just about being alone. It's about discovering a hidden superpower within ourselves. It's about finding peace, creativity, and strength in our own company. It's about learning to belong to ourselves, as Michel de Montaigne so eloquently put it. I live in that solitude which is painful in youth, but delicious in the years of maturity. Albert Einstein once remarked, capturing the transformative journey from the discomfort of aloneness in our younger years to the rich appreciation of it as we grow older. This evolution in our relationship with being alone mirrors our journey of self-discovery and personal growth. In youth, the idea of spending time by ourselves often comes laden with fears of loneliness or social rejection. Yet, as we mature, we come to realize that these quiet moments are not just gaps in our social calendar, but precious opportunities for introspection and self-understanding. The process of self-discovery is akin to an artist first facing a blank canvas. Initially, there is hesitation, a fear of the empty space, but gradually, as the artist's brush moves, a picture starts to emerge. Similarly, when we first begin to spend time with ourselves, we might feel discomfort or restlessness. However, as we continue this practice, layers of our personality, our desires and our fears begin to reveal themselves. It is in these moments of reflection that we often find the most honest version of ourselves. This honesty is vital it is the foundation upon which we can build a life that truly reflects who we are, not who we think we should be. Journaling, for instance, is an activity that can significantly aid this process. It allows us to converse with ourselves, to ask questions and ponder answers without judgment. Through writing, we can track our thoughts and emotions, observe patterns and make connections that might not be apparent in the chaos of everyday life. Similarly, Meditation offers a pathway to inner silence, a state where the noise of the world fades away, leaving us in a space of deep clarity and calm. Here, in the quietness, we can listen to the whispers of our inner voice, often drowned out in the din of our routine lives. Albert Einstein's perspective on aloneness as a tool for maturation resonates profoundly with this idea of self-discovery. His words suggest a recognition that the journey towards understanding oneself and the world is not one that can be undertaken amidst the constant distractions of a bustling life. It requires moments of isolation, periods where the mind can wander freely, unencumbered by the demands of society or the expectations of others. In these periods of reflection, our understanding of the world and our place in it crystallizes. We start to see things from a broader perspective, recognizing the interconnectedness of our experiences and the wider universe. This process of maturation through aloneness is not just about introspection, but also about building a relationship with oneself that is rooted in acceptance and understanding. It is about learning to appreciate our own company, to find comfort in our thoughts and dreams. This self-companionship becomes a source of strength, allowing us to face the world with confidence and resilience. It teaches us that while companionship and love from others are important, our first and most enduring relationship is with ourselves. As we evolve in our understanding of ourselves, our approach to personal growth also shifts. We begin to recognize that growth is not always about doing more or being more. Sometimes it is about being still, about listening and understanding. It is in these moments of stillness that we often find the insights that propel us forward, that help us to break through barriers and overcome obstacles. 
The journey of self-discovery and personal growth through aloneness is a paradoxical one. In stepping away from the world, we find a deeper connection to it. In turning inward, we discover universal truths, and in embracing the pain of isolation in youth, we unlock the delicious richness of maturity, a state where we are at peace with ourselves and the world around us. This journey is an essential part of the human experience, one that enriches our lives in myriad, often unexpected ways. Without great solitude, no serious work is possible. Pablo Picasso, a luminary in the world of art, once stated, shedding light on the profound relationship between creative work and the quietness of being alone. Picasso's insight reveals an essential truth about creativity. It often thrives in environments where the mind is free from the clamor and distraction of the outside world. This tranquility, often found when one is by themselves, becomes a fertile ground for ideas to germinate, grow, and flourish. In the realm of creativity, the absence of external stimuli serves as a catalyst for the mind to explore uncharted territories. When we are alone, our mind is not bound by the immediate demands of our surroundings or the expectations of others. This freedom allows our thoughts to wander, to explore the recesses of imagination and possibility. In this state, ideas that may seem unconventional or even radical in a social setting can be contemplated and nurtured. The history of art, literature, and science is replete with examples of individuals who found their most profound ideas in moments of isolation. Engaging in creative activities alone, such as writing, painting, or brainstorming, is not just about producing something new. It is a process of self-discovery a conversation between the Creator and their inner self. When writing, for instance, the writer is not just putting words on a page, they are uncovering parts of their identity, beliefs and perspectives that might not be evident even to themselves. Similarly, when painting, the artist does not merely create a visual expression, but embarks on a journey of personal expression and emotional exploration. These activities, when done in isolation, are unfiltered expressions of one's inner world, untainted by the need for external approval or validation. Picasso's emphasis on solitude as essential for serious creative work underlines the importance of a personal space where one's creative energies can be focused without interruption. This uninterrupted focus is crucial in the process of innovation and creation it allows for a deep immersion in the task at hand, often leading to breakthroughs and insights that might not be achievable in a more distracted setting. The uninterrupted stream of consciousness that flows in these moments can lead to connections and ideas that are truly original and groundbreaking. Furthermore, the act of engaging in creative pursuits alone is in itself a form of meditation. It allows for a mindfulness that is deeply connected to the present moment where the mind is fully engaged with the creative process. This engagement can be therapeutic, providing a respite from the stresses and strains of everyday life. The act of creation becomes a source of joy and fulfillment, an end in itself rather than a means to an external goal. This relationship between creativity and being alone is not just limited to traditionally creative fields such as art or literature, it extends to all areas of life, including business, science, and technology. For instance, brainstorming business ideas or solving complex scientific problems often requires a level of concentration and creative thinking that is best achieved in a quiet, uninterrupted environment. The stories of entrepreneurs conceptualizing ideas in their garages or scientists having breakthroughs in solitary walks are testaments to the power of this creative solitude. The quietness of being by oneself is not just a space for relaxation or escape from the world. It is a dynamic and powerful environment where creativity is nurtured and cultivated.
It is a space where the mind is free to explore, to innovate, and to create without boundaries. In embracing this tranquility, we open ourselves up to a world of endless possibilities and untapped potential. We allow ourselves to delve deeper into our thoughts and ideas, creating work that is not just serious, but often revolutionary. In solitude, the mind gains strength and learns to lean upon itself. Lawrence Stern eloquently captures the essence of how being alone can fortify the mind and spirit. This concept is pivotal in understanding the role of introspective periods in developing resilience, inner strength, and independence. These qualities are not just desirable traits, they are the bedrock upon which a confident and self-sufficient individual is built. The journey towards cultivating these characteristics often begins in quiet introspection, away from the external world's influence and noise. When we spend time in isolation, we are compelled to face ourselves in a way that is often impossible in the company of others. It is in these moments that we encounter our fears, doubts and insecurities head on. This confrontation, though challenging, is a crucial step in building resilience. It teaches us to find solutions within ourselves, to develop coping mechanisms that are personally effective, and to emerge stronger from each encounter. The process of overcoming these internal challenges is what forges the resilience that helps us navigate the external challenges of life. Building inner strength is similar to muscle training in physical fitness. Just as muscles grow stronger when they are exercised and pushed to their limits, the mind too develops fortitude when it is challenged. Engaging in activities alone, such as solo travel or learning a new skill, can be akin to a workout for the mind. These experiences push us out of our comfort zones and challenge our perceived limitations. They teach us to rely on our judgment make decisions independently, and trust in our abilities. The sense of accomplishment that comes from successfully navigating a solo trip or mastering a new skill alone is a profound builder of inner strength. Lawrence Stern's perspective on the mind gaining strength in isolation underscores the importance of self-reliance. The ability to lean upon oneself is not born out of arrogance or a disdain for others' support. Rather, it is a recognition of one's own capabilities and the confidence to rely on them. This self-reliance is a powerful tool in life. It enables us to approach challenges with the belief that we have the resources within ourselves to overcome them. It also fosters a sense of independence that is liberating, knowing that while we may appreciate and seek the company and assistance of others, our success and well-being are not wholly dependent on them. Moreover, the pursuit of activities alone has an intrinsic value that goes beyond building resilience and inner strength. It cultivates a sense of independence that is deeply empowering. This independence is not just about being physically alone. It's about the mental and emotional autonomy that comes from knowing that one is capable of self-sustenance and self-direction. It's about the freedom to choose one's path, make decisions based on personal convictions, and live a life that is authentically one's own. The development of these qualities through periods of isolation is not a linear or easy journey. It involves moments of doubt, fear, and even failure. However, it is through navigating these challenges alone that we truly grow. Each obstacle overcome, each decision made, and each new skill learned while alone adds a layer to our resilience, strengthens our inner core, and bolsters our independence. Lawrence Stern's insight into the strengthening effect of isolation on the mind is a profound observation of human development. The journey through isolation is not just about enduring being alone. It's about what we learn, how we grow, and the strength we gain in the process. It's about developing the resilience to face life's adversities 
the inner strength to stand firm in our convictions and the independence to carve our own path. I go to nature to be soothed and healed and to have my senses put in order. John Burroughs' words poignantly capture the essence of the transformative power of immersing oneself in the natural world. This connection with nature, especially when experienced alone, has a profound impact on our mental and physical well-being. It is in the embrace of the natural world that we find a unique type of peace and rejuvenation one that is markedly different from the restorative experiences found in our daily urban environments. The act of spending time in nature, away from the distractions and demands of modern life, offers a chance for deep reflection and reconnection with the simpler aspects of existence. Nature, in its vastness and beauty, provides a perspective that is both humbling and enlightening. It reminds us of our place in the larger scheme of things, reducing the weight of individual concerns and challenges. This perspective shift is not just mentally liberating, it also has tangible effects on our physical well-being. Research has shown that time spent in natural settings can reduce stress, lower blood pressure, and improve overall mood. Engaging in nature-related activities like hiking, nature walks, or gardening allows for an immersion in this therapeutic environment. Hiking, for instance, is not just a physical activity. It's a journey through different landscapes, each with its own story and beauty. It provides a sense of accomplishment and progression, mirroring the journey of personal growth. Nature walks, on the other hand, offer a more gentle immersion, where the focus is on the small details, the sound of leaves underfoot, the patterns of light and shadow, the symphony of birdsong. This attention to detail fosters mindfulness anchoring us in the present moment and clearing the clutter from our minds. Gardening too is a deeply fulfilling activity that connects us with the cycle of life. It teaches patience, care, and the joy of nurturing. Watching something grow and thrive under our care is a powerful metaphor for personal growth and development. It reinforces the idea that with time, care, and effort, beautiful things can emerge both in our gardens and in our lives. John Burroughs' quote beautifully encapsulates the healing power of nature. It suggests that nature has a way of organizing and clarifying our thoughts. In the chaos of everyday life, our senses are constantly bombarded with stimuli, leading to a sense of overload and fragmentation. Nature simplifies this complexity, providing a space where our senses can recalibrate the sound of a river, the sight of a mountain vista, the smell of a forest after rain, these experiences have a way of aligning our internal compass, giving us a sense of direction and purpose. The solitude experienced in nature is not one of isolation, but of connection. It is a connection to the earth, to the cycle of life, and to the deeper, often unacknowledged parts of ourselves. In the stillness of a forest or the expanse of a desert, we find a sense of belonging that is both ancient and deeply personal. This connection transcends the immediate, touching on something eternal and universal. In nature, we also find a mirror for our emotions and experiences. The changing seasons, the cycles of growth and decay, the resilience of flora and fauna, all resonate with our own experiences of change, loss and resilience. This resonance provides comfort and understanding, reminding us that we are not alone in our journey through life. The joy of being alone in nature is a multifaceted experience. It offers healing, clarity, and a deep connection with the world around us. It provides a space for reflection, growth, and rejuvenation. In embracing the solitude offered by nature, we open ourselves to a world of beauty, wisdom, and healing. We find a sanctuary where our senses can be realigned, our minds can find peace, and our spirits can soar.
Loneliness is the poverty of self, solitude is the richness of self. May Sarton's words offer a profound distinction between loneliness and being alone, a theme central to understanding and embracing the power of one's own company. This differentiation is crucial, as misconceptions about loneliness often lead to a fear of spending time alone, a fear that can deprive us of the many benefits that introspective solitude can bring. Loneliness is typically characterized by a feeling of emptiness and isolation, a sense that something is missing, often accompanied by sadness or anxiety. It is an emotional response to a perceived lack of connection or companionship. Solitude, in contrast, is a state of being alone without being lonely. It is a conscious choice to spend time with oneself, an opportunity to engage in reflection, creativity, and personal growth. Unlike loneliness, which is often seen as a negative state, Solitude can be a rich and fulfilling experience, a time of self-enrichment and discovery. One of the first steps in overcoming the fear of loneliness is understanding and acknowledging these differences. Recognizing that being alone does not inherently mean one is lonely paves the way for a more positive relationship with oneself. It allows for the recognition that one can be alone and still feel connected, content and fulfilled. Mindfulness and meditation are powerful tools in this journey of understanding and embracing being alone. These practices encourage a deep engagement with the present moment and with one's own thoughts and feelings. Through mindfulness we learn to observe our thoughts and emotions without judgment, understanding that they are transient and do not define us. This awareness helps in disentangling ourselves from negative thought patterns associated with loneliness and in cultivating a more compassionate and accepting relationship with ourselves. Meditation, on the other hand, allows us to delve deeper into our inner world. It provides a space for us to confront and process our fears, anxieties, and the root causes of our loneliness. This introspective process can be transformative, leading to a greater understanding of ourselves and our needs. It empowers us to seek fulfillment and contentment from within, rather than relying solely on external sources. May Sarton's quote beautifully highlights the enrichment that comes from embracing and enjoying one's own company. This enrichment is multifaceted. It includes the development of a stronger sense of self-awareness, a deeper understanding of one's values, beliefs and desires. It fosters independence and self-reliance qualities that are essential for a fulfilling and resilient life. It opens up the space for creativity and introspection, allowing us to explore new ideas, revisit old passions, and discover hidden facets of our personality. Another key strategy in overcoming the fear of loneliness is redefining the narrative around being alone. Society often stigmatizes being alone, equating it with being unsocial or undesirable. Challenging this narrative involves recognizing the value and importance of spending time with oneself. It's about seeing this time as an opportunity for growth, relaxation, and rejuvenation. By shifting our perspective, we can begin to appreciate the moments we spend alone, valuing them as much as the time we spend with others. Moreover, Engaging in activities that we enjoy alone can further help in overcoming the fear of loneliness. Whether it's pursuing a hobby, learning a new skill, or simply taking a walk, these activities can be deeply satisfying. They provide a sense of accomplishment and joy that is derived independently, reinforcing the idea that our happiness and fulfillment do not solely depend on the presence of others. Overcoming the fear of loneliness and embracing the richness of being alone is a journey of re-education and self-discovery. It involves distinguishing between loneliness and solitude, using tools like mindfulness and meditation to foster a deeper understanding and acceptance of oneself and reshaping the narrative around being alone. By embracing these principles, we open ourselves to a world of self-enrichment where being alone is not a state to be feared, but a state to be cherished and celebrated. It is a journey that leads to a stronger, more resilient and more fulfilled self, 
capable of finding joy and contentment from within. We need solitude because when we're alone, we're free from obligations. We don't need to put on a show and we can hear our own thoughts. Tamim Ansari insightfully highlights the liberating aspect of being alone. This statement underscores the importance of finding a balance between social interaction and personal time. In our increasingly connected world, where the lines between public and private life are often blurred, Maintaining this balance is crucial for a well-rounded and fulfilling life. This equilibrium is not just about time management, it's about nurturing both our social selves and our inner selves. The freedom from obligations and the absence of a need to put on a show that Ansari speaks of is a significant benefit of spending time alone. In social settings, there is often a conscious or unconscious pressure to conform to certain norms and expectations. We tailor our words, actions, and even thoughts to fit into the social fabric around us. While this adaptability is a valuable social skill, it can also be exhausting and at times inauthentic. In contrast, when we're alone, we're free to be our true selves. We can explore our thoughts and feelings without fear of judgment or the need to please others. This authenticity is vital for personal growth and self-understanding. However, while the value of being alone is undeniable, it is equally important to recognize the importance of social interaction. Humans are inherently social beings and our connections with others play a critical role in our happiness and mental well-being. Social interactions provide support, enable shared experiences, and foster a sense of belonging. They allow us to share our joys, sorrows, and discoveries, contributing to our emotional and psychological development. The key, therefore, lies in finding the right balance between these two states. This balance is not a one-size-fits-all formula. It varies from person to person, depending on individual needs, personalities, and circumstances. For some, a greater proportion of time might need to be spent in social settings to fulfill their emotional and psychological needs, while for others, more time spent alone might be essential for their well-being. Achieving this balance requires introspection and self-awareness. It involves understanding our needs and respecting our limits. It means recognizing when we need to withdraw from the world to recharge and when we need to engage with others to enrich our lives. This awareness can be cultivated through practices like mindfulness and self-reflection, helping us to tune into our mental and emotional states. Furthermore, balancing social life and time alone is not just about quantity, but also about quality. Quality social interactions where we feel genuinely connected and engaged can be deeply fulfilling. Similarly, the quality of our time alone matters. It's not just about being alone, but about how we use that time. Whether we spend it engaging in activities that nurture our soul, reflecting on our experiences, or simply resting and rejuvenating. Tamim Ansari's perspective on the space for authenticity and personal freedom that being alone provides is a crucial component of this balance. It reminds us that while social interactions are essential, they should not come at the cost of losing our authentic selves. The freedom to hear our own thoughts and be true to ourselves is just as important as the joy and fulfillment we derive from our relationships with others. The balance between social life and personal time is a dynamic and ongoing process. It requires conscious effort and continuous adjustment. It's about creating a life where we can enjoy the company of others while also cherishing the moments we spend alone. By achieving this balance, we can live a life that is not only fulfilling but also authentic, a life where we can be true to ourselves and still be an integral part of the social world around us. This balance is not just desirable, it's essential for our overall well-being and happiness.
Whosoever is delighted in solitude is either a wild beast or a god. Aristotle's statement intriguingly captures the extremes of how solitude has been perceived across different eras and philosophies. This quote highlights the notion that embracing and finding joy in being alone has often been seen as a trait of either the divine or the untamed, suggesting a departure from what is ordinary or expected in societal norms. This stark perspective invites us to delve into the various philosophical viewpoints on loneliness and being alone, spanning from ancient teachings to modern thought. Eastern philosophy, particularly Buddhism and Taoism, has long valued the practice of withdrawing from societal noise to seek inner peace and enlightenment. In Buddhism, the concept of solitude is often associated with meditation and the journey towards nirvana, a state of liberation from suffering and the cycle of rebirth. Solitude in this context is seen as a means to delve deeper into the mind, to understand the nature of reality and self. It is in the quiet moments of meditation that Buddhists believe one can gain insight into the true nature of existence, leading to inner peace and spiritual awakening. Taoism, another influential school of thought in Eastern philosophy, also places great emphasis on harmony with the natural world and the self. Solitude is valued as a state that allows for a deeper connection with the Tao, the fundamental principle that is the source of everything. In Taoism, being alone is seen as an opportunity to align oneself with the natural rhythms of the universe, fostering a sense of balance and tranquility. In contrast, Western philosophy, particularly Stoicism and Existentialism, offers a different perspective on being alone. Stoicism, an ancient Greek philosophy, views solitude as an opportunity to develop self-sufficiency and resilience. Stoic philosophers like Seneca and Marcus Aurelius advocated for the importance of being content with one's own company and using solitude as a time to reflect on and practice virtue. They believe that true happiness comes from within and is not dependent on external circumstances or relationships. Existentialism, a more modern philosophical movement, also places significant value on being alone, but for slightly different reasons. Existentialist thinkers like Jean-Paul Sartre and Friedrich Nietzsche emphasize the importance of individual existence, freedom and choice. For existentialists, being alone is crucial for authentic existence. It is in moments of isolation that individuals confront the absurdity of life and the burden of freedom, leading to a more authentic and self-aware existence. In the realm of modern thought, contemporary psychologists and authors have continued to explore the role of being alone in personal development and mental health. The perspective has shifted from seeing solitude solely as a spiritual or philosophical practice to understanding its psychological benefits. Modern psychology recognizes the importance of being alone for mental health, creativity, and emotional regulation. It is seen as a time for self-reflection, self-care, and personal growth. Authors like Susan Cain, in her book, Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking, have highlighted the societal undervaluation of being alone and introversion, advocating for a better understanding and appreciation of these states. Aristotle's observation that those who delight in being alone are akin to gods or wild beasts speaks to the ancient recognition of the exceptional nature of solitude. It acknowledges that finding contentment and joy in being alone is a departure from the norm, a trait seen in those who have transcended common societal tendencies. This perspective resonates through the ages, from Eastern philosophy's view of solitude as a path to enlightenment, to Western philosophy's emphasis on solitude for authenticity and self-sufficiency, and into modern understandings of the psychological benefits of spending time alone. Each of these perspectives contributes to a richer understanding of the value of solitude. In Buddhism, solitude is not merely a physical state, but a mental and spiritual discipline. The practice of solitary meditation, known as bhavana, is central to Buddhist practice, 
It is in the quiet and seclusion of meditation that one can observe the workings of the mind, understand the nature of desire, and ultimately transcend the cycle of suffering. The Buddhist perspective thus views solitude as essential for deep spiritual growth and enlightenment. This view underscores the idea that true peace and happiness come from within, rather than from external sources. Taoism, with its emphasis on living in harmony with the Tao, views solitude as a means to connect with the natural order of things. The Taoist sage seeks solitude to better understand the flow of the universe and to cultivate a way of life that is in harmony with it. This involves a deep listening and attuning to both the external world and the inner self. The Taoist approach to being alone is thus one of active engagement with the world in its most fundamental aspect, suggesting that solitude can bring about a profound understanding and acceptance of the nature of existence. Turning to Western philosophy, Stoicism's approach to solitude is grounded in the cultivation of inner strength and independence. The Stoic finds in solitude the opportunity to practice virtue and develop an inner citadel, impervious to the fluctuations of fortune and external circumstances. This perspective suggests that solitude can be used as a training ground for developing resilience, emotional regulation, and a deep sense of contentment that is not reliant on external validation or social interaction. Existentialism, with its focus on individual freedom and authenticity, sees solitude as essential to the project of self-definition. In the absence of external influences and societal pressures, the individual is free to explore and define their essence. For existentialists, solitude is thus a state where one can confront the fundamental questions of existence, make authentic choices and create meaning in a seemingly indifferent universe. In the modern psychological context, the role of being alone is multifaceted. It is seen as crucial for cognitive development, emotional regulation, and creativity. Psychologists recognize the need for periods of solitude to process experiences, reflect on emotions, and develop a coherent sense of self. Authors and thought leaders in contemporary society advocate for a re-evaluation of the role of solitude challenging the stigma associated with being alone and highlighting the numerous benefits it brings. The exploration of diverse philosophical perspectives on loneliness reveals a rich tapestry of thought. From the Eastern practices that see solitude as a path to spiritual enlightenment and harmony with the universe, to the Western philosophies that emphasize its role in cultivating resilience and authenticity, to modern psychological understandings of its benefits for mental health and personal growth. Each perspective offers valuable insights into the multifaceted nature of solitude. Aristotle's analogy of the solitary individual as akin to a god or wild beast thus serves as a poignant reminder of the extraordinary nature of solitude and its profound impact on human existence. As we end our exploration into the nature of solitude and loneliness, it's important to reflect on the key insights gleaned from various philosophical, psychological and personal perspectives. Throughout this journey, we've delved into the depths of what it means to be alone, the profound impact it can have on our personal growth, creativity, resilience, inner peace and authenticity. We've seen how different cultures and philosophical schools view solitude and how these views have evolved over time to shape our modern understanding of this essential human experience. The journey of embracing solitude is not just about discovering the joy and enrichment it brings, but also about understanding and overcoming the fear of loneliness. It involves differentiating between the state of being physically alone and the emotional experience of loneliness. By embracing periods of solitude, we open ourselves to a world of self-discovery and personal growth. We learn to appreciate our own company, understand our deepest desires and fears, and develop a robust sense of self-reliance and independence. 
The quiet moments spent in self-reflection are invaluable. They are the moments where we grow the most. Moreover, the creative power of solitude cannot be overstated. History is replete with artists, writers, scientists and thinkers who have found their most profound ideas in the silence of their own company. Solitude provides the space for our thoughts to breathe, for our creativity to flourish and for our ideas to take shape. It is in these moments that we often find the insights that propel us forward, breaking through barriers and transcending limitations. The significance of solitude isn't just in what we achieve during these times, but also in how it enriches our interactions with the world and with others. A balanced life is one that values both solitude and social interaction. Each complements the other. Solitude enriches our social experiences, and our social experiences, in turn, enrich our moments of solitude. This balance is crucial for a fulfilling and well-rounded life. As we've seen through diverse philosophical perspectives, the value of solitude has been recognized and celebrated across cultures and eras, from the introspective paths of Eastern philosophies to the resilience and authenticity espoused by Western thought and the psychological well-being highlighted by modern thinkers. Solitude is a golden thread weaving through the tapestry of human experience. The journey into understanding and embracing solitude is a deeply personal and transformative one. It challenges us to confront our fears, explore our inner worlds, and emerge stronger, more creative, and more authentically ourselves. It teaches us that being alone does not mean being lonely. Instead, it means being in touch with a part of ourselves that is rich, vibrant, and full of potential. Let us step into the embrace of solitude with courage and openness. Let us discover the treasures that lie within our own minds and hearts. Let's remember that, in the quiet moments of being alone, we are in the company of the most important person in our lives, ourselves. And in these moments we have the opportunity to grow, to create, to reflect, and to become the best versions of ourselves. Remember, solitude is not just a state of being, it's a state of becoming. It's where we meet ourselves, where we dance with our thoughts, where we nurture our dreams, and where we forge our paths. Embrace it, cherish it, and let it guide you to a life of depth, fulfillment, and authentic happiness. The question isn't who is going to let me, it's who is going to stop me. These powerful words by Ayn Rand encapsulate a philosophy that has inspired, challenged and provoked thought across generations. Today we dive deep into the mind of this enigmatic figure, a novelist, a philosopher and an unapologetic advocate for the individual. Ayn Rand born Alisa Zinovievna Rosenbaum in 1905 in Russia, witnessed the horrors of the Bolshevik Revolution, an experience that profoundly shaped her philosophy and writing. Her journey to the United States in 1926 marked the beginning of an era where she would not only find her voice but also challenge the philosophical norms of her time. Rand's novels, Atlas Shrugged and The Fountainhead, are not just stories, they're manifestos. The Fountainhead, published in 1943, introduces us to Howard Rourke, an architect who chooses to struggle in obscurity rather than compromise his artistic vision. This novel is a celebration of the creative individual, fighting against the tide of mediocrity and collectivism. It's about the triumph of the human spirit against overwhelming odds. Atlas Shrugged, Rand's magnum opus, takes this a step further. Published in 1957, it weaves a dystopian tapestry where society's most productive members choose to withdraw their talents in protest against a parasitic system. This novel is not just a story, it's a philosophical exploration of Rand's vision of an ideal society. But what exactly is this vision? 
This is where we enter the world of objectivism, Rand's unique philosophy. Objectivism rests on the pillars of rational self-interest, individualism, and the pursuit of one's own happiness. It argues that the moral purpose of one's life is the pursuit of one's own happiness or rational self-interest, and that the only social system consistent with this morality is one that respects individual rights embodied in laissez-faire capitalism. Rand's philosophy is often misunderstood as a callous endorsement of selfishness. However, a closer look reveals something more nuanced. It is a celebration of the individual's potential and a call to live with integrity and purpose. Rand challenges us to think, to question, and to dare to stand alone if necessary. In today's exploration, we delve into seven transformative lessons from Ayn Rand's philosophy. These lessons are not just abstract concepts, they are practical tools for self-development. They challenge us to look within and question the societal norms that often go unchallenged. They invite us to embrace our individuality, to value our own judgment, and to carve our own path in the pursuit of happiness. As we embark on this journey together, remember that the essence of Rand's philosophy is not in blind adherence, but in the courage to think and live independently. Each lesson we will explore is a stepping stone towards understanding not just Rand's vision, but also our own potential in this vast complex world. Moving on from our introduction to Ayn Rand and her philosophy, we now delve into the first of the seven transformative lessons from her teachings, the virtue of selfishness. Ayn Rand's concept of selfishness is often misinterpreted, leading to misconceptions about her philosophy. To understand this lesson, we need to redefine what selfishness means in the context of Rand's objectivism. For Rand, selfishness is not about mindless greed, or the exploitation of others. Instead, it is about rational self-interest, the understanding that one's primary moral obligation is to achieve one's own well-being and happiness. Rand famously said, to say I love you, one must first know how to say the I. This encapsulates her belief that understanding and valuing oneself is a prerequisite to meaningful relationships and contributions to society. She argues that only when individuals prioritize their values and goals can they truly live fulfilling lives and in turn positively impact those around them. This concept directly challenges the traditional view that regards selfishness as inherently negative. Conventional moral teachings often promote self-sacrifice and altruism as the highest virtues, suggesting that prioritizing one's own interests is morally wrong. Rand turns this notion on its head asserting that sacrificing one's own values and well-being for others is not only detrimental to oneself, but also to society. She believed that a society that respects individual rights and fosters self-responsibility would be more just and prosperous. To illustrate this, consider the story of a brilliant scientist who sacrifices his research to please his family, or an artist who abandons her vision to conform to societal standards. In both scenarios, the individuals deny their true selves, leading to a life of regret and unfulfilled potential. Conversely, imagine these individuals pursuing their passions and using their unique talents to their fullest. Not only would they achieve personal happiness and fulfillment, but they would also contribute significantly to society. Rand's idea of rational self-interest does not advocate for a life devoid of generosity or kindness. Rather, it suggests that these virtues should stem from a genuine alignment with one's values and not from a sense of duty or guilt. For instance, a businessman who invests in a venture he truly believes in, or a teacher who dedicates her life to education because it's her passion, are both practicing Rand's ideal of rational self-interest. This lesson, therefore, is a call to introspect 
and identify what truly matters to us as individuals. It encourages us to set goals that resonate with our deepest values and to pursue them diligently. In doing so, we are not only asserting our right to personal happiness, but also setting a foundation for a life that is rich, fulfilling and authentic. As we reflect on this lesson, it's important to recognize the courage it takes to live by this principle. It requires us to sometimes stand against societal norms, to face criticism and to uphold our convictions even when it's challenging. Yet, the reward is a life lived on our own terms. A life where we are the authors of our destiny. The virtue of selfishness as taught by Ayn Rand is not about egotism or disregard for others. It's about recognizing and honoring our own worth, aspirations and happiness. It's a celebration of the human spirit and its potential for greatness when unshackled from the chains of self-denial and sacrificial morality. As we progress through the other lessons from Rand's philosophy, this foundational concept of rational self-interest will be a recurring theme underpinning the journey towards self-development and personal excellence. Lesson 2. The Importance of Rational Thinking Ayn Rand held that reason is man's only means of grasping reality and his primary source of knowledge. According to Rand, the human mind is not just capable of reasoning, but is fundamentally reliant on it for survival and flourishing. She asserts, reason is not automatic. Those who deny it cannot be conquered by it. Do not count on them leave them alone. This quote highlights the centrality of reason in her philosophy. It is a tool that needs to be actively engaged and cannot be taken for granted. In Rand's view, all knowledge starts with the evidence of the senses, our direct interaction with the world. From this sensory data, the mind uses reason to form concepts, integrate ideas, and make judgments. She vehemently opposed the notion of inherent knowledge or mysticism as sources of understanding. For Rand, acknowledging reason as the primary source of knowledge is acknowledging the power of the human mind to understand the world and shape our destiny within it. Critical thinking and logic are the cornerstones of rational thinking. They allow individuals to analyze information, discern truth from falsehood, and make decisions based on evidence rather than emotion or hearsay. In Rand's philosophy, the ability to think critically and logically is not just a skill, but a moral duty. It is through this rigorous process of thought that individuals can come to understand the world around them and their place within it. The application of rational thinking is crucial in decision making. Rand believed that every choice we make shapes our lives and that these choices should be guided by rational thought rather than whims or societal pressures. This means evaluating options based on their long-term consequences, potential benefits and alignment with one's values and goals. It is through this reasoned evaluation that individuals can make choices that lead to true fulfillment and success. Rand's emphasis on rational thinking extends to ethics as well. She argues that to live morally, one must live rationally. This means making ethical choices based on a rational understanding of one's self-interest, the facts of reality, and the potential impact on one's life and goals. For Rand, ethical living is not about following arbitrary rules or commands, but about making choices that are in one's rational best interest. In the context of society, Rand advocates for a system where rational thinking is at the forefront of public discourse and policy. She believed that a society that values reason is one that promotes freedom, innovation and progress. In such a society, individuals are free to think, to question and to innovate, 
leading to advancements in science, technology, and the arts. Rand also placed a significant emphasis on education in fostering rational thinking. She believed that education should not just impart knowledge, but should teach individuals how to think, to analyze, to question, and to reason. An educational system based on these principles would produce individuals capable of independent thought, innovation, and responsible citizenship. For personal growth, Rand posits that engaging in rational thinking allows individuals to understand themselves better, to identify their values, and to set meaningful goals. It is through the process of rational self-reflection and analysis that individuals can grow, overcome challenges, and achieve personal fulfillment. Contrary to the belief that creativity is purely an emotional or mystical process, Rand argues that creativity too is a product of rational thought. In her view, creativity involves using reason to integrate existing knowledge in new and innovative ways. It is the rational mind that enables artists, writers, and inventors to create works that are both original and meaningful. In discussing the importance of rational thinking, it is also crucial to acknowledge the challenges it faces in contemporary society. These include emotionalism, subjectivism, and the rejection of objective reality. Rand argued that these trends are detrimental not just to individual well-being, but to the health of society as a whole. She advocated for a culture that values and promotes rational discourse, scientific inquiry, and objective analysis. The lesson of the importance of rational thinking in Ayn Rand's philosophy is a call to recognize and embrace reason as our primary tool for understanding the world, making decisions and living ethically. It is a call to cultivate critical thinking and logic, to value education and rational discourse, and to create a society where reason is respected and revered. Embracing this lesson is not just about acquiring knowledge, it is about building a foundation for a life of purpose, achievement, and true happiness. Lesson 3. Individualism over Collectivism Ayn Rand staunchly believed in the supremacy of individual rights and freedoms over any form of collective or state control. She posited that each person is an end in themselves and should never be a means to the ends of others. Rand articulates this idea vividly when she asserts, The smallest minority on earth is the individual. Those who deny individual rights cannot claim to be defenders of minorities. This statement underscores her belief that the protection of individual rights is the only true safeguard against tyranny and oppression. For Rand, individualism is not just a personal stance but the bedrock of a just and progressive society. She envisioned a social order where individuals are free to pursue their own lives and happiness, unencumbered by undue state control or collective coercion. In her novel, Atlas Shrugged, the protagonists epitomize this ideal. They are individuals who assert their right to live and work on their own terms. Rejecting the demands of a society that seeks to exploit their talents and creativity for the so-called common good. Rand believed that individualism is the fountainhead of creativity and innovation. She argued that all great achievements in science, technology, art and literature are the products of individual minds working freely and without constraint. In her view, creativity thrives in an environment where individuals are free to think, experiment and express themselves without fear of censorship or reprisal. The unique visions and innovations of individuals push society forward, challenging the status quo and leading to progress. Personal growth and self-realization, according to Rand, are possible only in an environment that respects individual autonomy. Each person should have the freedom to set their own goals, make their own choices, 
and live according to their own values. This freedom is essential for discovering one's passions, developing one's talents, and achieving personal fulfillment. Rand's characters like Howard Rourke in The Fountainhead embody this philosophy. Rourke, an architect, refuses to compromise his artistic vision even when it means facing rejection and poverty. His integrity and dedication to his individual vision represent the ideal of personal growth through steadfast adherence to one's values. In contrast to individualism, collectivism, according to Rand, subjugates the individual to the group, whether that group is defined by class, race, or some other collective identity. Collectivist thinking, in her view, leads to a loss of personal autonomy and ultimately to tyranny. It stifles creativity and innovation because it demands conformity and discourages independent thought. In a collectivist society, the unique talents and aspirations of individuals are sacrificed for the group's perceived needs, leading to a culture of mediocrity and stagnation. Collectivism, Rand argues, not only limits personal freedom and growth, but also harms society as a whole. When individuals are not free to pursue their own interests and develop their unique talents, society loses out on the potential contributions they could have made. Collectivism leads to a situation where instead of diverse, innovative ideas flourishing, a homogenized set of beliefs and practices takes precedence, stifling progress, and leading to cultural and economic stagnation. In the realms of economics and politics, Rand's advocacy for individualism translates into support for laissez-faire capitalism and limited government. She believed that when individuals are free to trade and compete in the market, it leads to efficient allocation of resources, innovation, and wealth creation. Politically, she championed a system that protects individual rights and freedoms, arguing that such a system provides the best environment for human flourishing. The lesson of individualism over collectivism in Ayn Rand's philosophy is a profound assertion of the rights and freedoms of the individual. It is a call to recognize and honor the unique value and potential of each person. By championing individualism, Rand provides a framework for personal growth, creativity, and societal progress, contrasting sharply with the limitations and dangers of collectivist thinking. This lesson is a reminder of the importance of protecting and valuing individual rights as the foundation for a free, prosperous, and vibrant society. Lesson 4. The Role of Purpose Ayn Rand passionately advocated for the idea that having a central purpose in life is essential for happiness and success. She believed that purpose acts as the guiding force in an individual's life, providing direction and meaning. In her words, a central purpose serves to integrate all the other concerns of a man's life. It establishes the hierarchy, the relative importance of his values. It saves him from pointless inner conflicts. This statement encapsulates her belief that a life without purpose is a life adrift, susceptible to external influences and internal confusion. Identifying one's purpose is a deeply introspective process. It involves looking inward to understand what truly drives and motivates you as an individual. This could be a passion for a particular field, a desire to achieve a specific goal, or a dedication to a set of values. Rand's characters often embody this pursuit of purpose, such as Rourke in The Fountainhead, whose purpose is his architectural vision, or Dani Taggart in Atlas Shrugged, driven by her love for running the railroad and making it successful. The journey to finding one's purpose often begins with self-reflection and a deep examination of one's values, interests and talents. It's about asking oneself questions like, what am I passionate about? 
What gives me a sense of satisfaction and fulfillment? What are my natural talents and strengths? How can I contribute to the world in a meaningful way? This process may take time and can involve trial and error as individuals explore different paths and learn more about themselves. Once a sense of purpose is identified, the next step is to actively pursue it. This involves setting specific, achievable goals that align with one's purpose. It requires determination, resilience, and a willingness to overcome obstacles and challenges. Pursuing one's purpose often demands stepping out of comfort zones, taking risks, and making sacrifices. However, the fulfillment and satisfaction derived from living a purpose-driven life make these challenges worth confronting. Rand emphasizes the importance of aligning one's actions with their life's purpose. This means consistently making choices and decisions that support and advance one's central purpose. It involves prioritizing activities and commitments that are in line with one's goals and values and saying no to those that are not. This alignment is crucial for maintaining focus, conserving energy, and making consistent progress towards one's goals. In Rand's view, happiness and success are byproducts of living in accordance with one's purpose. When individuals engage in work and activities that resonate with their core values and aspirations, they experience a sense of joy and accomplishment. This is not a transient happiness, but a deep, enduring sense of fulfillment that comes from knowing one is living authentically and making a meaningful contribution to their chosen field or cause. Living a purpose-driven life also has a significant impact on one's self-esteem. Achieving goals and realizing one's vision fosters a sense of competence and self-worth. It reinforces the belief in one's abilities and the value of one's contributions. High self-esteem in turn fuels further achievements, creating a positive cycle of growth and success. Pursuing one's purpose is not without its challenges. It often involves facing skepticism, criticism, and opposition. As illustrated in Rand's novels, where her protagonists battle societal norms and expectations. However, these challenges are integral to the journey and test the strength of one's commitment to their purpose. The lesson of the role of purpose in Ayn Rand's philosophy is a powerful call to action. It urges individuals to find their central purpose in life and to align their actions with this purpose. This alignment is not just a path to personal happiness and success. It is a moral imperative that drives individuals to achieve their fullest potential. Embracing this lesson means embarking on a journey of self-discovery, setting meaningful goals, and living a life that is true to one's deepest values and aspirations. Lesson 5. The Ethics of Productiveness in Ayn Rand's philosophy, productiveness is not just a practical necessity, but a moral virtue. She asserts that the act of creating value through productive work is not merely a means to an end, but an end in itself. Rand eloquently states, Productive achievement is a consequence and an expression of health and self-esteem. For Rand, productiveness is an expression of one's rationality a manifestation of one's ability to think, plan, and create. It is through productive work that individuals can actualize their ideas, utilize their skills, and contribute to society. Productiveness, in Rand's view, is the process through which humans sustain their existence and improve their quality of life. It involves applying one's mind and effort to create goods, services, or ideas that have value. This value creation is not limited to economic terms, but encompasses artistic, scientific, and intellectual achievements as well. Rand's characters, like Hank Reardon in Atlas Shrugged, epitomize this virtue through their dedication to their work and their relentless pursuit of innovation and excellence. 
Productive work plays a vital role in building and maintaining self-esteem. Rand believed that self-esteem is rooted in the knowledge that one is capable of facing the challenges of life. Through productive work, individuals not only prove their competence to themselves, but also gain a sense of pride and accomplishment. This sense of achievement is crucial for an individual's self-worth and overall well-being. To find meaning and value in one's work, it is essential to engage in a career or occupation that aligns with one's skills, interests, and values. This involves introspection to understand what one is passionate about and what kind of work resonates with one's personal identity. It means seeking roles that challenge and engage, where the individual can see the impact of their efforts and feel a sense of contribution. Setting clear and achievable career goals is another important aspect of finding meaning in work. Goals provide direction and a sense of purpose in one's professional life. They should be challenging yet realistic, pushing the individual to grow while providing a clear path to success. Achieving these goals contributes to a sense of accomplishment and reinforces the individual's belief in their abilities. Innovation and creativity are key components of productiveness. Rand encourages individuals to think outside the box, challenge conventional wisdom and bring new ideas to fruition. This creative aspect of work is not confined to traditionally creative fields. It applies to all forms of productive work, from entrepreneurship to scientific research to the arts. Continuous learning and skill development are crucial for maintaining and enhancing one's productiveness. In an ever-changing world, staying abreast of new technologies, methodologies and industry trends is vital. This not only enhances an individual's ability to contribute effectively, but also ensures ongoing personal and professional growth. While emphasizing the importance of work, it is also important to balance professional commitments with other aspects of life. This includes personal relationships, leisure activities and personal health. A balanced life ensures that one is not only productive, but also healthy and fulfilled in all areas. In any productive endeavor, challenges and setbacks are inevitable. Rand's philosophy teaches resilience in the face of obstacles. It's important to view challenges as opportunities for growth and learning, rather than as insurmountable barriers. Persistence, adaptability, and a positive attitude are key in overcoming these obstacles and continuing on the path of productive work. The lesson of the ethics of productiveness in Ayn Rand's philosophy is a celebration of the human capacity to create, innovate, and add value to the world. It underscores the importance of productive work in achieving self-esteem, personal growth, and fulfillment. By embracing productiveness as a moral virtue, individuals can lead a life of purpose, contribute meaningfully to society, and achieve a sense of satisfaction and pride in their accomplishments. Lesson 6. Integrity and Moral Principles Ayn Rand placed an extraordinary emphasis on the virtue of integrity, viewing it as essential to living a moral and fulfilling life. She defined integrity as the refusal to compromise one's convictions for the sake of convenience or social approval. In her words, integrity is the ability to stand by an idea. This assertion encapsulates the essence of her view on integrity. It is about unwavering adherence to one's principles, regardless of external pressures or temptations. For Rand, principles are not abstract concepts, but practical guidelines for living. They are derived from a rational understanding of reality and one's nature as a rational being. Living by these principles means making choices and taking actions that are aligned with one's core beliefs and values. This congruence between belief and action is what defines a person of integrity. Integrity is intrinsically linked to authenticity. By consistently acting in accordance with one's beliefs, 
an individual maintains their true self. This authenticity breeds a deep sense of self-respect and confidence. It allows individuals to lead a life that is not only morally upright, but also psychologically healthy. Rand's protagonists like John Galt and Atlas Shrugged embody this ideal. Their actions are a direct expression of their values, making them paragons of integrity and authenticity. Identifying one's moral principles is an introspective process. It involves examining one's beliefs, values, and the reasons behind them. This examination should be grounded in reason and objective reality. It requires asking oneself questions like, what do I consider right and wrong? What values are non-negotiable for me? What principles do I want to guide my life? The answers to these questions form the foundation of one's moral framework. Upholding one's moral principles often requires courage and resilience, especially when these principles are challenged by external circumstances or popular opinion. It involves making decisions that may be difficult or unpopular, but are in alignment with one's ethical beliefs. This commitment to principles, even in the face of adversity, is what characterizes a person of integrity. Consistency in action and belief is crucial for maintaining integrity. This means not only espousing certain values, but also living them out in one's daily life. It involves aligning one's actions, decisions, and interactions with others with one's stated beliefs and values. This consistency reinforces one's sense of self and provides a clear guide for behavior in various situations. Integrity also plays a vital role in relationships. It involves being honest and transparent with others, keeping promises and respecting others' rights and boundaries. Relationships grounded in integrity are built on trust and mutual respect, forming a solid foundation for healthy and lasting connections. Living with integrity fosters personal growth. It challenges individuals to constantly evaluate and refine their beliefs, to learn from their experiences, and to develop a deeper understanding of themselves and the world around them. Integrity acts as a compass, guiding individuals towards actions and decisions that lead to personal and moral development. Conflicts of integrity where one's values or principles are tested are inevitable. Handling these conflicts requires a clear understanding of one's values and the willingness to make tough choices. It may involve compromise in non-essential areas, but never at the cost of one's core principles. Navigating these conflicts with honesty and courage is integral to maintaining one's integrity. The lesson of integrity and moral principles in Ayn Rand's philosophy underscores the importance of living a life congruent with one's beliefs and values. It is a call to identify and uphold personal moral principles, to act consistently with these principles, and to do so with honesty and courage. Embracing this lesson leads not only to moral rectitude, but also to a life marked by authenticity, self-respect, and profound personal fulfillment. Lesson 7. The Power of Independent Thinking Ayn Rand championed the concept of independent thinking which she saw as essential for personal freedom and societal progress. She believed that the ability to think independently, free from societal pressures and orthodoxies, is one of the most crucial attributes an individual can possess. In her words, to think means to question, to find one's own answers, and to live by one's own thinking. This encapsulates her belief that independent thinking is not just an intellectual exercise, but a way of life. Rand saw conformity as a major threat to individualism and progress. She argued that when people conform to societal expectations or norms without critical examination, they suppress their unique perspectives and potential. Independent thinking, therefore, involves questioning prevailing beliefs, challenging established norms, 
and seeking truth based on one's own reasoning and evidence. Independent thought is the bedrock of innovation. Rand posited that all major advancements in science, art and industry are the result of individuals who dared to think differently and challenge the status quo. She highlighted that progress is driven by those who question conventional wisdom and propose novel solutions to problems. This innovation is not confined to grand inventions, but occurs in everyday life when individuals apply creative and independent thought to their work and personal challenges. Personal authenticity is intrinsically linked to independent thinking. When individuals think for themselves, they develop a deeper understanding of their values, desires and aspirations. This self-awareness enables them to live authentically, making choices that align with their true selves rather than external expectations. Such authenticity leads to a more fulfilling and meaningful life. Nurturing independent thinking requires deliberate effort. It begins with cultivating curiosity and a love for knowledge. Encouraging oneself to ask questions, seek out new information, and engage with diverse perspectives is vital. Reading widely, exploring different fields, and exposing oneself to various viewpoints can broaden one's horizon and stimulate independent thought. Critical analysis and skepticism are essential tools for independent thinking. This involves not taking information at face value, but analyzing and evaluating it for validity and logic. It means being skeptical of easy answers and popular opinions, and instead seeking evidence and reasoning before forming conclusions. Engaging in debates and discussions can also foster independent thinking. Exchanging ideas with others, especially those with differing views, challenges one's thought processes and exposes one to alternative ways of thinking. It is important, however, to approach these exchanges with an open mind and a willingness to reconsider one's views in the face of compelling arguments. Journaling and reflective practices can help in developing independent thinking. Writing down thoughts, reflections, and responses to various issues can clarify one's thinking and reveal underlying beliefs and biases. Reflecting on one's experiences and decisions helps in understanding the rationale behind them, promoting a more thoughtful and deliberate approach to life. Resisting social pressure is crucial for maintaining independent thought. This might involve standing up for one's beliefs even when they are unpopular or choosing a path that is different from the one expected by society or family. It requires courage and a strong sense of self, but it is essential for preserving one's intellectual autonomy. While advocating for independent thinking, it's also important to recognize the value of interdependence. Humans are social beings and collaboration and learning from others are essential parts of our existence. Independent thinking should not mean isolation or disregard for others' perspectives, Rather, it is about engaging with others thoughtfully while maintaining one's own intellectual sovereignty. The lesson of the power of independent thinking in Ayn Rand's philosophy is a compelling call to break free from the shackles of conformity and to embrace the freedom and responsibility of thinking for oneself. It is a celebration of the human mind and its capacity to question, innovate and create. By nurturing independent thought, individuals not only contribute to their personal growth and authenticity, but also to the advancement of society as a whole. As we draw our exploration of Ayn Rand's philosophy to a close, it's essential to reflect on the profound and actionable insights her teachings offer. Each lesson we've dissected not only challenges conventional paradigms, but also provides a robust framework for personal growth and self-actualization. Let's briefly revisit these pivotal lessons. 1. The Virtue of Selfishness We began by exploring Rand's redefinition of selfishness as rational self-interest, challenging conventional morality that often demonizes self-focus. 
This lesson invites us to prioritize our values and goals for a fulfilling life, reorienting our understanding of what it means to truly care for oneself. 2. The Importance of Rational Thinking we delved into the significance of reason as the primary source of knowledge, advocating for a life guided by logic and critical thinking. This lesson is a reminder of the power of our minds to discern truth, make informed decisions, and lead a reasoned life. 3. Individualism over Collectivism Rand's preference for individual rights over collective control underscores the importance of personal freedom and autonomy. This lesson celebrates the unique potential of each individual and warns against the dangers of conformist thinking. 4. The Role of Purpose We examined the crucial role of having a central purpose, highlighting how it directs our actions and decisions towards fulfillment and success. This lesson encourages us to introspect, identify our passions, and align our lives with these guiding stars. 5. The Ethics of Productiveness Rand's view of productive work as a moral virtue emphasizes the creation of value as an expression of our abilities and a contribution to society. This lesson teaches us the importance of finding meaning in our work and the joy of achieving through our efforts. 6. Integrity and Moral Principles We discussed the significance of living by one's principles emphasizing that integrity and consistency in actions foster authenticity and self-respect. This lesson is a call to uphold our moral values even in the face of adversity. 7. The Power of Independent Thinking Finally, we explored the importance of thinking independently, free from societal pressures, fostering innovation and personal authenticity. This lesson encourages us to question to seek our own answers and to live by the conclusions we reach through our reasoning. As we reflect on these lessons, it becomes evident that Rand's philosophy is not just a set of abstract ideas, but a practical guide for living a fulfilling and meaningful life. These lessons challenge us to reassess our beliefs, to strive for personal excellence, and to live with purpose and integrity. They invite us to embrace our individuality, to think critically, and to contribute productively to the world around us. I encourage you to ponder how these lessons resonate with your life and aspirations. How can you apply these principles to enhance your personal and professional journey? In what ways can these insights transform your approach to challenges and opportunities? I urge you to take these lessons to heart. Let them be a catalyst for self-examination and growth. Embrace the journey of discovering your true self, of living by your values, and of making your unique mark on the world. Remember, the path to a fulfilling life is paved with the bricks of purpose, integrity, and independent thought. Ayn Rand's philosophy offers a powerful message that each individual has the capacity to lead a life of extraordinary meaning and achievement. It is a philosophy that champions the human spirit, advocating for a life lived boldly, thoughtfully, and authentically. So as you step forward from this moment, carry with you the wisdom of these lessons and let them guide you to a life of purpose, integrity, and flourishing. Love is the only sane and satisfactory answer to the problem of human existence. Erich Fromm In a world brimming with fleeting connections and digital interactions where swipes left and right dictate our romantic encounters, the quest for true love often seems like a labyrinth with no clear exit. This journey, while deeply personal, is a universal human experience, laden with aspirations, doubts, and most importantly, a relentless search for a connection that transcends the ordinary. Today I invite you on an explorative journey through the mind of Erich Fromm, a renowned psychoanalyst and philosopher whose seminal work, The Art of Loving, offers profound insights into the nature of love. 
Published in 1956, this masterpiece remains a beacon of wisdom in our often tumultuous quest for heartfelt connections. But why turn to a book that's over half a century old for guidance on such a modern dilemma? The answer lies in the timeless nature of Fromm's observations and the universal truths about human nature and relationships that he so eloquently unveils. Born at the turn of the 20th century, Fromm witnessed a world in upheaval, a society grappling with the aftermath of wars, the rise of industrialization, and the advent of modern psychology. In this milieu, he carved out a unique philosophical stance. Influenced by Freudian psychoanalysis, his perspectives were not just reflections of a clinical mind, but also of a heart deeply attuned to the human condition. The Art of Loving is not just a book, it's a mirror reflecting our deepest yearnings and fears about love. Fromm challenges the conventional notion of love as a mere sentiment, an effortless emotion that serendipitously strikes the heart. Instead, he posits love as an art, akin to painting or music, requiring knowledge, effort and practice. This revolutionary idea shifts the paradigm from a passive state of falling in love to an active standing in love, where love is not just felt, but lived and nurtured. But why is this perspective crucial today? In our contemporary world, where relationships often buckle under the weight of unrealistic expectations and the relentless pursuit of perfection, this wisdom is a much-needed antidote. His views prompt us to introspect, to question our understanding of love, and to embark on a journey of cultivating it as a skill. A discipline that enriches not just our relationships, but our entire being. The purpose of this video, therefore, is to delve into the depths of his teachings and extract pearls of wisdom that can guide us in our pursuit of true love. We'll explore his concepts of love, not just as a romantic endeavor, but as a holistic approach encompassing self-love, brotherly love, erotic love, motherly love, and the love of God. Each of these forms interweave into the fabric of our lives, influencing how we connect with others and ourselves. Moreover, in an age where technology often dictates the tempo of our relationships, understanding and applying his principles can be transformative. His insights into the active components of love care, responsibility, respect, and knowledge serve as a compass to navigate the complex dynamics of modern relationships. These components are not abstract concepts but tangible actions that can be incorporated into our daily lives, redefining how we approach love and relationships. As we unfold the layers of this profound philosophy, we'll also critically examine its relevance and applicability in today's context. Do his ideas stand the test of time? How do they resonate with contemporary views on love and relationships? Are there aspects of his theory that are contentious or outdated in the light of modern psychological understanding? These are some of the questions we'll ponder upon. In essence, this journey is not just about understanding Fromm's perspective on love. It's an invitation to introspect to challenge our preconceptions and to embark on a more conscious and fulfilling journey towards love. A journey that is as much about finding someone to love as it is about becoming someone capable of deep, meaningful love. Fromm revolutionized the way we think about love by proposing that it is not merely an emotion but an art that can be mastered. He argued that love, like any art, requires knowledge, effort, and practice. This perspective challenges the popular notion that love is something that happens to us, suggesting instead that it is something we actively cultivate and develop. His idea moves love from the realm of the mystical and unattainable to something concrete and achievable. Central to Fromm's concept of love as an art is the idea that it involves a deep understanding of and connection with another person. 
This understanding extends beyond the superficial level of everyday interactions, reaching into the essence of another's being. He believed that this deep connection could only be fostered through dedicated effort and practice, just as one would practice a musical instrument or a craft. He categorizes love into several types, each with its unique characteristics and importance. Brotherly love, for instance, is the love that we feel towards humanity in general. It is an altruistic love, free from the desire for something in return. This form of love is foundational for a healthy society, as it promotes empathy and understanding among individuals. Romantic love, another type identified by Fromm, is perhaps the most familiar. It's the intense and passionate connection often depicted in literature and movies. However, cautions against viewing romantic love as a fleeting, passionate emotion that happens by chance. Instead, he views it as a deep connection between two individuals that can be sustained over time with care and effort. Self-love, according to him, is not to be mistaken for narcissism or egoism. Rather, it's about respecting and understanding oneself, acknowledging one's worth and capabilities. He argued that self-love is a prerequisite for loving others. Without a healthy sense of self-love, an individual cannot truly connect with or love another person. Love of God, for him, is a transcendental experience. It's a deep and profound love that connects an individual with a higher spiritual reality. This form of love, according to Fromm, can bring a sense of peace and understanding that surpasses ordinary experiences. He emphasizes that love comprises four key components. Care, responsibility, respect, and knowledge. Care is the active concern for the life and growth of what we love. It's demonstrated through our actions and attitudes towards the loved one, showing that we value their well-being and happiness. Responsibility, as he defines it, is not about obligation, but a voluntary act of responding to the needs of others. In the context of love, this means being attentive and responsive to the emotional and physical well-being of the loved one. Respect, in his view, is recognizing the other as an individual, separate and different from ourselves. It involves seeing them as they are, without trying to change them to fit our desires or needs. This component of love is crucial for maintaining the individuality and autonomy of both parties in a loving relationship. Knowledge, as a component of love, refers to the deep understanding of another person. This understanding goes beyond surface-level knowledge and delves into the core of the individual's being. It's about understanding their thoughts, feelings, motivations and experiences. Fromm also talks about the art of loving as a process of growth and development. He emphasizes that love is not a static state, but an ongoing journey. This journey involves continuous learning, adapting, and evolving both as individuals and in our relationships with others. The concept of love as an ongoing process ties back to his belief in love as a skill. Just like any skill, it requires practice and dedication. It's not about achieving a perfect state of love, but about continually striving to deepen and enrich our understanding and connection with others. His exploration of love extends to the societal level as well. He suggests that the principles of love, when applied collectively, can lead to a more empathetic and connected society. This idea is particularly relevant in our modern world, where social connections are often fleeting and superficial. The practice of love also involves overcoming various obstacles. These include societal norms, personal fears, and insecurities that can hinder our ability to love fully and genuinely. He urges us to confront and overcome these barriers to foster deeper and more meaningful relationships. 
His emphasis on the active nature of love is a call to action. It encourages us to engage in self-reflection and to actively work on developing the skills necessary for love. This involves not only understanding and practicing care, responsibility, respect and knowledge, but also cultivating empathy and compassion. Fromm's The Art of Loving offers a comprehensive and profound exploration of love. His ideas challenge us to rethink our perceptions of love and to approach it not just as a feeling, but as a skill that can be developed and nurtured. By understanding and applying his principles, we can embark on a fulfilling journey towards deeper, more meaningful connections with ourselves and others. In today's digital era, the way we approach love has been significantly altered. The ubiquity of social media and online dating platforms has transformed traditional pathways of finding and nurturing relationships. While these tools have made connecting with others more accessible, they also present challenges. The paradox of choice, where an abundance of options leads to indecision and constant searching, often hinders the development of deep and meaningful connections. Fromm's emphasis on love as an art form requires a counterbalance to the superficial connections fostered by these digital platforms. Another challenge in our fast-paced society is the commodification of love. In a culture that often values efficiency and convenience, relationships can sometimes be treated like transactions evaluated based on what each party brings to the table. This mindset runs counter to his view of love as a selfless and nurturing practice. It requires a shift from viewing relationships as transactions to embracing them as opportunities for growth and connection. Fromm's principles offer valuable guidance in navigating these challenges. A key aspect of practicing the art of love in today's world is mindfulness. Being present in our interactions, whether online or in person, allows us to connect more deeply with others. This means actively listening, showing empathy, and engaging in meaningful conversations beyond superficial exchanges. Active effort is another crucial aspect. In the context of modern relationships, this means taking the time to really get to know someone, understanding their needs, desires, and fears. It's about going beyond the online profile or the persona presented in social situations to connect with the authentic individual. Respect for individuality is essential in today's diverse society. His concept of respect involves appreciating and celebrating differences rather than expecting others to conform to our own ideals or standards. Practicing self-love is also vital. In an age of social media where comparison is inevitable, maintaining a healthy sense of self-worth can be challenging. Cultivating self-love according to these principles involves engaging in self-care, setting boundaries, and valuing oneself independently of external validation. Responsibility in relationships, as he outlines, extends to digital interactions. It means being accountable for our words and actions online just as we would be in person. In a world where digital communication can often be impersonal or detached, taking responsibility for how we communicate can foster more authentic and caring interactions. Applying Fromm's component of knowledge in modern relationships involves seeking to understand the complexities of today's society and how they impact our relationships. This means being aware of the pressures and challenges unique to our time and being empathetic towards how these factors influence individuals' behavior and attitudes towards love. In friendships, the digital era often leads to superficial connections. By applying his principles, friends can strengthen their bonds by engaging in deep and meaningful conversations, showing genuine interest in each other's lives and providing support during challenging times. In the context 
of community involvement, his concept of brotherly love can inspire individuals to engage in acts of kindness and empathy. Volunteering, participating in community events, or simply offering help to a neighbor are ways to practice this form of love, contributing to a more caring and connected community. In romantic relationships, the practice of love as an art involves regular communication, understanding, and compromise. Couples can apply Fromm's principles by dedicating time to nurture their relationship, addressing conflicts with empathy and respect, and supporting each other's personal growth. For individuals seeking love, his approach suggests focusing on self-development and understanding one's own needs and desires. This self-awareness can lead to healthier and more fulfilling relationships, as individuals are better equipped to engage in mutually nurturing partnerships. Fromm's principles of love offer timeless wisdom that can be applied in various aspects of modern life. By embracing these concepts, individuals can navigate the challenges of today's digital and fast-paced society, fostering deeper and more meaningful connections in their personal, professional and community relationships. Plato's Concept of Love Plato, a seminal figure in Western philosophy, offers a rich perspective on love, particularly in his dialogue, The Symposium. His concept of love, or eros, is initially portrayed as a desire for physical beauty. However, Plato evolves this idea into a love that transcends physical attraction, advocating for a love that aspires to the intellectual and the eternal, the forms or ideas. In the Symposium, through the character of Socrates, Plato describes the journey of love as one that starts from the love of a single beautiful body to the love of all beautiful bodies, and from there to the love of beautiful souls, and finally, to the love of the beauty itself. This philosophical journey highlights a move from the physical to the metaphysical, suggesting a love that seeks wisdom and truth. Comparing this with Fromm's views, both philosophers see love as more than just an emotional or physical response. They emphasize a deeper, more meaningful connection with the world and with ideas. However, while Fromm focuses on love as an active skill and a social art, Plato elevates love to a metaphysical quest for truth and beauty. Aristotle's views on love Another giant in ancient Greek philosophy diverges from Plato in his views on love. In his Nicomachean Ethics, Aristotle speaks of philia, often translated as friendship or affection, which he considers as essential to human life as eros. Philia is based on mutual goodwill, equality, and sharing common interests or virtues. For Aristotle, the highest form of philia is the friendship of virtue. This form of love is not based on utility or pleasure, but on a mutual appreciation of the virtues the other person holds. It's a stable form of love, one that sees and values the other for who they are, not for what they can provide. Comparing Aristotle's philia with Fromm's love, we see a common thread in the emphasis on active participation and a deeper understanding of the other. Both views reject superficial connections and underscore the importance of a more profound, character-based love. John Bowlby's Attachment Theory Moving to a modern psychological perspective, John Bowlby's Attachment Theory provides significant insights into how early relationships with caregivers shape our approach to love and relationships in adulthood. According to Bowlby, the quality of attachment in early life influences one's attachment style. Secure, anxious or avoidant. Which then dictates how individuals approach love and intimacy in their adult relationships. Bowlby's theory suggests that those with secure attachment styles are more likely to have healthy, satisfying and stable relationships. They are comfortable with intimacy and independence. In contrast, 
Those with anxious or avoidant attachment styles may experience challenges in forming and maintaining relationships. Comparing this with Fromm's perspective, both highlight the importance of early experiences in shaping one's approach to love. However, he emphasizes more on the conscious development of the capacity to love as an art, while Bowlby focuses on the subconscious impact of early attachments. Carl Rogers' Person-Centered Theory A prominent figure in humanistic psychology presented a view of love centered around the concepts of empathy, unconditional positive regard, and congruence. Rogers believed that love in its truest form involves accepting the other person as they are without conditions or judgments. Rogers' concept of unconditional positive regard, where one accepts and loves the other regardless of their flaws, aligns closely with Fromm's idea of respect and care in a loving relationship. It's about appreciating the other person in their entirety, not just for certain aspects or conditions. Comparing Rogers and Fromm, we find a shared belief in the importance of genuine acceptance and understanding in love. Both emphasize the need for an empathetic, nurturing approach to relationships. Friedrich Nietzsche's Perspective on Love Known for his critical and often controversial views, had a complex perspective on love. Nietzsche saw love as a will to power, an expression of one's life force. He believed that love should enhance one's life and spirit, rather than being an act of self-sacrifice or loss of strength. Nietzsche's idea of love as a will to power can be seen as a form of self-love that encourages individual growth and self-actualization. This contrasts with Fromm's view, which emphasizes love as an art involving care, responsibility, respect and knowledge, and is directed towards others as well as oneself. Examining these varied philosophical and psychological perspectives on love enriches our understanding of the concept. While each offers a unique viewpoint, they all contribute to a more nuanced appreciation of what it means to love. From Plato's quest for truth and beauty, Aristotle's emphasis on virtue and character, Bowlby's exploration of attachment, Roger's focus on empathy and acceptance, to Nietzsche's will to power, each perspective provides valuable insights that complement and contrast with Fromm's views on the art of loving. As we draw this exploration to a close, it's time to reflect on the rich tapestry of ideas and philosophies we've traversed regarding the concept of love. We began with Eric Fromm and his revolutionary view in The Art of Loving, where love is not merely an emotion but an art to be cultivated with knowledge, effort and practice. His vision of love encompasses various forms including brotherly love, romantic love, self-love and the love of God, each integral to our understanding and experience of love. The components he identifies, care, responsibility, respect and knowledge are not just abstract ideals but actionable attributes that can profoundly enrich our approach to love. Transitioning into the modern context, we grappled with the challenges posed by our digital, fast-paced world and how it reshapes our understanding and pursuit of love. We delved into practical advice, drawing from Fromm's principles to navigate these challenges. Real-life examples and hypothetical scenarios brought these ideas closer to our everyday experiences, illustrating how his concepts could be applied to deepen and enrich our relationships in the contemporary world. We then expanded our horizon to include the perspectives of other philosophers and modern psychological theories. Plato's elevation of love from the physical to the metaphysical realm, Aristotle's emphasis on philia, Bowlby's attachment theory, Rogers' advocacy for unconditional positive regard, and Nietzsche's interpretation of love as a will to power, all offer diverse lenses through which we can view love. Each perspective, with its unique nuances, 
contributed to a broader, more enriched understanding of love, its dynamics, and its impact on our lives. As we conclude, it's essential to recognize that the exploration of love is as vast and deep as the emotion itself. Each philosopher, including Fromm, presents a piece of the puzzle, offering insights that resonate differently with each individual. Love, in all its forms, is a complex and multifaceted experience, deeply personal yet universally understood. It's a journey that encompasses self-discovery, connection with others, and ultimately, a deeper understanding of what it means to be human. Love, in its essence, is not just about feelings but actions. It's about making an effort, understanding, respecting and nurturing. It's about transcending our individual selves to connect with something greater, be it another person, the community or the higher ideals of beauty and truth. Love, in all its complexity and simplicity, is the art of life. It's the continual practice of growing, giving and connecting that enriches our existence. In the words of Fromm, love is the only sane and satisfactory answer to the problem of human existence. May this exploration of love inspire you to engage more deeply, love more freely, and live more fully.